Absent. Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Council Member John Lee. Present. And Councilwoman Rodriguez. Absent, and we have three members on a quorum, Mr. Chair. Very good. Uh, we will start this meeting by taking public comment on the items listed on the agenda. Our goal is to take as many speakers as we possibly can. We'll then move through the agenda one item at a time, listen to staff presentations, deliberate and vote on the items accordingly. Uh, there are additional uh, instructions for public comment that we'll have read into the record at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-644-6631 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. During public comment, city staff will call on members of the public by the last four digits of their phone number. By pressing star nine, callers raise their virtual hand to request to speak. Once the caller hears the last four digits of their phone number, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute themselves when it is their turn to speak. Once the caller is ready to speak, they must state their name and the items they are calling to speak on. Failure to do so will result in the call being muted and subsequently disconnected. Appellants and or their representatives and applicants and or their representatives will be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes per side unless otherwise noted by the chair. Members of the public wishing to speak on one agenda item only <coughs> shall have an opportunity to speak for one minute. Appellants and applicants will be given an opportunity to speak when their item is called. Each appellant and applicant has a total of three minutes to speak. An appellant can choose to have a single representative speak on his or her behalf or divide the three minutes among his or her team. Anyone else, including an attorney or project manager, wishing to speak on an appellant's behalf who does not do so during this three minute period may offer a minute of public comment whenever the committee chairperson opens the public comment period for the meeting, which is usually at the beginning of the meeting. Therefore, we expect that appellants and applicants have the respective teams assembled and ready to present at the appropriate times today. Members of the public wishing to speak on more than one item shall state that and shall be allowed to speak for a total of two minutes. Failure to raise your hand to speak in a timely manner before the comment period for the item ends results in forfeiture of the opportunity to participate in public comment for the item. Mr. Chair, if I may for the record, a community impact statement has been submitted by the Wilmington Neighborhood Council for agenda item five in support of the matter and a community impact statement has been submitted by the Westwood Neighborhood Council for agenda item 50 in support of the matter. Madam City Attorney, please provide additional guidance on public comment. Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as possible. If you are not speaking on topic or if we cannot tell whether you are speaking on an agenda item, I will provide one brief warning. If you do not immediately and clearly return to the topic, or if you continue to stray off topic and disrupt the meeting, you will forfeit the rest of your time and we will move on to the next speaker. You will be informed when your time is up. Council member, will you be um, hearing um, any amendments before public comment today? Uh, I don't think we have amendments. Uh, I don't know if there are additional recommendations, uh, but I know we have no amendments that uh, I have any record of. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And so with that, we'll uh, begin public comments. You raise your hand. To raise your hand, you press star nine. Uh, you will hear the last four digits of your phone number. Then you press star six, six to unmute yourself. And then uh, you can get ready to speak. If you are on the phone and you don't raise your hand, 
Uh, if you're on the line and you don't raise your hand, you won't be able to speak. Uh, so please uh, raise your hands in a timely uh, fashion. And with that, we'll go to public comment. Caller with the number ending in 0333, please press star six to unmute yourself. Yes, hi, my name is Danielle Peters. I'm speaking today as the president of the Hancock Park Booster Club on item number 14. Um, I'm also someone who lives in this community my whole life. My children now go to Hancock Park School and I am speaking in support of the project, again in item number 14. Um, a lot of us on the board and at our school think this project is very thoughtfully designed and it will only better uh, what is now a very stagnant area. The Holland Group has gone above and beyond to work really closely with our school community for years and to make sure that all of our concerns are squashed. Um, as you know now, that corner has been stagnant for quite some bit and unfortunately in this area, stagnation does now lead to an increase in the presence of really mentally unwell transient persons. So uh, we also think it will add to the safety of our community. Um, we are very much in favor of the way that this group has conducted themselves as a community partner. And they have done a lot to change the project in several ways based on our concerns and as a result of conversations that we have had over the years. Thank you, caller, that's your um, time. Caller with a number ending in 1395. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, my name is Ryan Smith and I'm speaking on item number nine. Uh, members of the plan committee, I represent Community Coalition, a nonprofit organization established 30 years ago to transform the social and economic conditions in South LA that foster addiction, crime, violence, and poverty by building a community institution that involves thousands and creating and influencing, uh, changing the public policy landscape. I urge the commission to approve the actions related to the convention center expansion and modernization project. Community Coalition is committed to building power for everyday people in South LA. This change is possible and we are united as a community and have partners at the table like AEG, uh, a partner we've worked with for uh, 20 years. AEG has a long track record of supporting development projects which create living wage jobs, create a welcoming environment for families and provide a community benefit. The Convention Center Modernization Project will create living wage jobs in construction, hospitality, and facility management to support career opportunities for the next generation. There has been a thorough environmental review and extensive public outreach. The signage Thank and other speaker, items being time. requested are consistent with the surrounding community. Thank you. Caller with the number ending in 1000. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon. My name is Isaac Badlon, and I'm speaking on uh, agenda item number 14. Thank you for uh, <clears throat> listening my talk. I'm a parent at uh, Hancock Park Elementary School and also a resident of Park Brea. I'm speaking here personally and not in my capacity as a board member of the Mississippi West Neighborhood Council. Uh, I'm speaking in support of the third and Fairfax project. The applicant Holland Partner Group has been an amazing community member and corporate citizen. Uh, as Danielle has already said, the school has worked closely with developers to ensure that the project did not have significant impacts on the school or the community at large. We believe they did the most extensive environmental review possible, and we definitely appreciate that. In fact, the developer has committed to helping the school through funding a variety of programs that benefit the children and teachers, and has committed to doing so for years to come. We see this partnership with Holland Partners as a win-win for the school, the community at large, and the project. The new project is gonna enhance the, the site and create a much more pleasant, walkable, and pedestrian area. It's obviously a big improvement to our existing conditions. The developer has worked uh, Thank you, for years your time. with our community.
Hi, my name is uh, Nicole Lapidus. I am also speaking on topic number 14, and I'm also a parent um, at Hancock Park School. I would like to urge the commission to approve the project. Um, we also believe that the Holland team has been a wonderful partner. They have also completed several noise studies um, showing that the project would not create significant noise impact on our students and have also committed to support the school through technology, equipment, music, art, math, and education programs, and we're delighted to see the project move forward. As a resident of the neighborhood, I agree the area has been stagnant, and it would be fantastic to have this project move forward. It would enhance the neighborhood, and uh, we wholeheartedly embrace this project and look forward to it being approved. Good afternoon, members of the Plum Committee. My name is Andrew Rodriguez. I am a representative of the South Park Business Improvement District, and I'm here to speak on item number 9, 22-0536, regarding the Los Angeles Convention Center expansion and modernization. I urge the committee to support uh, advancing the action items related to the modernization project. Uh, the mission of our bid is to support the unique living and commerce experience for its residents and businesses by facilitating a safe, clean, and collaborative environment while supporting economic development in the South Park community. This project does just that. Um, it is estimated by 2025 the convention center expansion modernization will result in more than double the number of booked events annually compared to the uh, no expansion scenario. Um, so we fully support this and urge the committee to move forward on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, just to interrupt, uh, Madam City Attorney, I do believe we have some uh, recommendations. Uh, and I guess the advice is that we should read those into the record before continuing with public comment. Adrian Corsani, City Attorney's Office. Yes, Council Member, that would be the advice. So if there are any recommendations, amendments, um, points for consideration when the committee deliberates, um, they should be introduced by staff at this time. Okay, so we'll introduce those at this moment. So, uh, Councilman and committee members, a letter has been uploaded by the planning department to Council File 220536, item nine on today's council agenda. And uh, that letter includes minor corrections and clarifications that are required uh, as to the proposed ordinance. Um, and, th and those uh, technical corrections um, I will read into the record to be specific. Uh, section 3B, it, text has been added to clarify that the existing ordinances, the arena sign regulation ordinance and the convention and event center sign district are being superseded. In section seven, uh, I believe it's uh, L or I, uh, looks like an L, uh, it state, uh, as noted on the uh, letter, it's to modify the wall sign regulations, which stated that all signs outside the arena zone would need to comply with the municipal code requirements related to sign area. However, the current design of, of sign uh, CC.03 uh, could exceed the code sign area limitations. Therefore, a modification is needed to allow wall signs to comply with the greater of either the maximum sign area per the municipal code or the sign area identified in the conceptual sign plans. And three, minor corrections to spelling, abbreviations, and punctuation. These uh, changes have been denoted and underlined in the proposed sign district ordinance and have been uploaded as stated into the council file uh, and it's uh, for the public's view. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I believe we also have recommendation, uh, a recommendation on item number eight. 
Yes. As to item number eight, the recommendations, the additional recommendations are to approve the modifications to condition number 28 in a new recommendation as noted in the communication dated June 16, 2022 from the planning department and uploaded to council file number 220443 as follows. The operator shall submit this copy of this decision to the California State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. A new recommendation. There shall not be any sale of single cans or bottles of beer, wine, coolers, or malt liquor from prepacket six or four packs. The sale of individual cans or bottles of craft beer from 21 plus fluid ounce containers is permissible. And three, a plan approval in 12 months, an instruction to the planning department to prepare that plan approval in 12 months. That concludes the recommendations for item eight, Mr. Chair and committee members. Thank you so much. So I think that concludes our recommendations. We'll go back to public comment. It looks like we have about 30 people on the line. I'm sorry, council member. I believe there is an additional statement from CD9 with some recommendations and amendments. Yes, my name is Sherilyn Correa. I'm the director of planning and economic development for council member Kern Price. And on behalf of the office of council member Kern Price, he'd like to express his ongoing support and commitment for the expansion and modernization of the Los Angeles Convention Center. As we review these potential amendments to the convention and event center specific plan, we would, we will, which will be renamed the convention center and arena specific plan. We'd like to take special note of the importance this sign district has on our expansion efforts. Our office would like to make a few amendments to the sign district ordinance to reflect the terms that are more closer alignment with existing and future plans for the arena zone area. So the first one would be the south wall sign as part of the city's ongoing efforts to incentivize construction of the arena. It's granted a 55 year right to AEG's predecessor in interest to have a sign up to 6,000 square feet, identify the convention center as a name sponsoring, any sponsoring name. We would like to modify the sign district to allow the wall marked as AS.01 to be amended from its existing 1,800 square feet up to 6,000 square feet in the sign area. Number two, our arena sign ordinance pillar sign. In 1999, in connection with the arena, the city council passed an area sign ordinance, the ASO, which allowed for freestanding structures and signs or pillars, similarly to those that are located within the Xbox Plaza at LA Live. We would like to keep the original intent of the ASO by making a few amendments to the provisions for pillar signs as attached in a letter that we've submitted to the planning department. Additionally, we would like to request that no offsite signage shall face or front Gilbert Lindsay Plaza. Uh, number three, um, is, as it relates to illuminance, the existing convention and event center sign district limits lumina luminous intensity for digital signage at 800 candelas for nighttime illuminance. Neighboring signs along and near Figueroa Corridor have nighttime luminance intensities ranging from 600 candelas to unlimited. In an effort to maintain our competitive advantage in the area, we would like to recommend a 600 candela limit during nighttime hours. The attached, uh, we've attached uh, our proposed changes as well uh, to the planning department. Uh, and then finally, number four, uh, the freeway edge sign flexibility is important. Um, a slight revision we are proposing, which will allow the city a maximum flexibility for mixing and matching among the three conceptual sign plan options for the signs along the freeway. Uh, so uh, based on uh, the foregoing, we respectfully request that Plum adopt the attached revisions. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll uh, return to public comment. Um, 
we, it looks like we have uh, about 30 people on the line. Uh, so we'll allot an additional 40 minutes in total for public comment uh, before we begin deliberation. Members of the Planning and Land Use Committee, my name is Paco Vetana. I'm the Vice President of Program at Wellness, a nonprofit dedicated to providing emotional health and wellness services to children, young adults, and families in communities such as South Los Angeles. I'm here to urge you to approve the actions related to the Convention Center expansion and modernization project. Forgive me, I'm referencing item number nine. These projects will create living wage jobs in construction, hospitality, and facility management to support job opportunities for local community. The families that we work with desperately need these types of workforce opportunities. Most importantly, this project is supported by AEG, a trusted partner in the community. Wellness has been having providing mental health services to underserved communities for almost 100 years. We have worked closely with AEG and are impressed with significant community engagement and work they have implemented. This project has received thorough environmental review and there have been extensive outreach and project benefits. We encourage you to move forward with the approvals before you today. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am counsel for number 15 on calendar, requesting three minutes. You have uh, one minute. Even though I'm counsel, we're going. Good, good afternoon. I'm counsel for number 15 on calendar regarding Habibi Cafe. Basically, Habibi Cafe is attempting to survive, continue in business as it has been at the same location for 20 years. One of the restrictions being demanded is that Habibi Cafe close its doors at 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, in the hookah business, persons enjoy hookah uh, and don't begin to experience that process until sometime after midnight, forcing Habibi Cafe to close at 10 p.m. to result in the closing and effectively financially ruining the business. Worse yet, that appears that the city planning commission is attempting to close Habibi in its entirety under a pretext. Habibi Cafe serves a unique clientele Customers have different customs, uh, different uh, in part you, because speaker. of their Middle East time. ancestry and origin. Uh, it's difficult to impose. Caller with the number ending in 8985, please state your name and which item you're speaking on. Hello, my name is Sean Dorley. I am uh, speaking on agenda item 14. I'm a parent at Hancock Park Elementary School and a member of the Friends of Hancock Park School Parent Booster Club. I am in support of the third and Fairfax project. The Holland Group has reached out and engaged with the Friends of Hancock Park School and listened to our concerns and worked with us to address them. Uh, some examples, the building was reduced in scale from high rise to mid rise. The developer is committed to helping the school through funding programs such as uh, purchasing school supplies, maintaining technology equipment, supporting musical art and math programs, upgrading our facilities, and a general campus beautification projects. The developer is committed to a long-term partnership with our school, and I support this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Speaker. My name is Sandra Bryant, and I'm calling to speak on item number nine. I'm representing All People's Community Center, an 80-year-old nonprofit dedicated to comprehensive social services and programs to support children and families and build strong communities. I'm here to urge you to approve the actions related to the Convention Center expansion and modernization project. The project itself will create living jobs which 
we have talked about earlier uh, that are desperately needed for the economic recovery within our community. The development of the Staples Center, now Crypto.com Arena and LA Live revitalized downtown. The expansion of the Convention Center will broaden the success. The involvement of AEG is who is a trusted business within the community and has deep ties in helping residents uh, benefit from development in downtown. There has been over a 20 year history of working with AEG. They've supported our Tomorrow's Leaders program. Thank you, Speaker, that's your and time. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Pastor Zach with Creed LA, and I'd like to speak on items number six and number 11. May I have two minutes, please? You may begin. With regards to item number six, thank you, by the way, 1111 West Sunset, we are in strong support of this project. First and foremost, we are seeing not only a potential for up to 827 residential units being added to the housing stock, depending on the development plan, but 76 of those being very low income regardless. And not only are desperately needed affordable units being added, but 95,000 square feet of commercial uses attached to this project ensures that jobs are being created, which enriches the economic vibrancy of not only the project itself, but also the district and the city as a whole. With respect to item number 11, 121 West 3rd Street, we are also in support of this project for the same reason. The addition of 331 units of housing, as well as 37 very low income units, ensures that this project continues the progression of LA meeting housing demand, not only in total number, but also affordable stock. And the design of, the, of three commercial tenant spaces for 121 West 3rd Street, totaling 6,350 square feet, also speaks to the inclusion of smaller retailers being given consideration in the city's commercial development in downtown making economic visibility viable to independent merchants who bring products and services that are distinct and unique to downtown LA. We appreciate your time and attention today from committee members to these items and ask that you approve them. Thank you and God bless you. Caller with the number ending in 2980, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, Adrian Scott Fine with the Los Angeles Conservancy speaking on item 12. We object to the city's proposed reliance on a Skippy exemption, which is only allowed when the city can affirmatively demonstrate that the project would not have an adverse impact on the historic resource. That definitively is not the case here as the historic building will be demolished through the proposed Skippy project. Despite a flawed attempt to consider only the business itself to be historic, there's overwhelming evidence and expert analysis in the record saying otherwise, pointing to the building as the historic resource, including at least six separate reports and expert opinions. The city's Skippy analysis runs counter to CEQA requirements and must be considered concurrently with the project approval. Please do not support this Skippy request as an EIR is required. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Hello, I'd like to speak on uh, item six and 11. May I have two minutes? You, you may begin. Thank you. I'm Sean Silva on behalf of Creed LA, fully in support of 1111 West Sunset, as well as 121 West Third Street. We're glad to support both, and the through line with these projects, if I may say, is transformational. That's the word I would use. The Sunset Project for one reason, it accomplishes everything that we as a city need to accomplish in new development. Repurposing a disused lot with a timely homage to the city's past and present, well understood commitment to the community, and over 700 units added to our city housing stock no matter the proposed development scenario, 76 of which for low income housing. This project puts in considerable effort to meet and exceed the city's urgent and growing housing shortage. Grow in its environmental credentials and you see why we support it. As for 121 West 3rd Street, here is a project that is a worthy example of infill development in downtown, adding 331 new residential units, and that's 37 units set aside for very low-income households, and that's downtown. Let's be honest. A project like the first one and a project like this that transforms an at-grade private parking lot into a 15-story tower with 300 housing units in the heart of downtown is exactly, and I mean exactly, what we need to see. 
the project is well designed and located right where it needs to be. And the other one is going to be a transformational project for the city. So we strongly support both. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Germain, and I'm speaking today as a member of Sheet Metal Workers Local 105. We are in support of projects 6 and 11. I'd like to speak for both. For item 6, as a member of the trades, I see an encouraging spirit of inclusion in this project. No member of the community, whether they are a neighbor or business owner or a member of all trades like me, has been left out of the decision. As for item Item 11, we also support the 121 West 3rd Street project's approval. Let's see more projects like this. That's what I think. The developer has pledged to support the local, skilled, and trained workforce of Los Angeles through actionable measures as we build this project. And that st stability lets us do our jobs and bring quality to our job sites. We can't ask for more. Please join us in supporting them both and approve the projects. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of PLUM. My name is Leonardo Cablian, Director of the Youth Source Center at Brotherhood Crusade. I'm here in support of item number nine. Uh, representing Brotherhood Crusade for a 50-year-old nonprofit organization that works to improve the quality of life, meet the needs of low-income, underrepresented, and disenfranchised individuals. I'm here to urge you to approve the actions related to the Convention Center expansion and modernization project. This project will create living wage jobs and construction, hospitality, facilities management to support the immediate economic recovery and to sustain career opportunities for the next generation. The development of the then Staples Center in LA Live revitalized downtown. AG, AEG is a trusted business with deep ties to the community and a proven track record of maximizing public benefits for the betterment of the community. This has allowed residents throughout Los Angeles to benefit from the development in downtown. Brotherhood Crusade has a 20-year history of working with AEG. They provided career and job exploration programs, participated in mentorship programs, provided funded for funding for recreational opportunities for the youth, and provided once-in-a-lifetime experiences for our students. Thank um, you, Speaker. That's your time. We encourage you to move forward with the approvals for you before you today. Thank you. Caller with the number ending in 0934, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Albert Wardy, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Iron Workers Local 416, and I'm speaking on items 6 and 11. Uh, we're in full support of uh, the project at 111 West. Sunset, as well as uh, 121 West 3rd Street. The project at uh, 111 West uh, 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 Sunset is what we consider a great project. In addition to bringing uh, uh, much needed uh, housing to, and public space to LA, it will be built with the community support and will in turn support the community. I'm an LA resident myself, and the fact that my job will be supported because of, of the commitment of paying livable wages and ensuring that we're giving adequate benefits and allowing us to train our, 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 our youth, our apprentices for the next generation gives us hope. Um, and it gives, us, uh, gives the iron workers hope of the future. And as for item number 11, while this is the development of the future, prioritizing the worker and the community I don't need to repeat uh, uh, to the committee the benefits of a skilled workforce and, and, in, and earning dignified wages and working uh, with apprentices, as I just stated. Uh, but it, 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 it just ensures qualified, safe workers on these construction sites, okay? uh, uh, especially in L.A. 
and needs to continue to grow. Please support this project alongside, alongside us. It's crucial that we set the bar uh, for development high in LA. We have to have high expectations, and we've got to, to hold our developers uh, accountable. And in this case, they are. So we're, full, we're in full support of this project. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Hi, good afternoon. Isabel Lee with Central City Association speaking on item number nine. The convention center expansion would make Los Angeles among the most competitive destinations for convention activities in the, in the country and bolster our tourism industry, a cornerstone of the city's economy. It creates thousands of new jobs, provide much needed open space, and deliver several community benefits. It would also strengthen downtown as a hub of activity for the upcoming major events like the 2028 Summer Olympics. Finally, it would generate hundreds of millions of dollars in net new city revenue, an order of magnitude that few, if any, other development projects in the city could yield. To deliver these benefits, the expansion could include the recommended signage provisions in addition to the requested sign and illumination limits of 600 candelabras. This is consistent with the surrounding area signage rules and is appropriate in, in this energetic and vibrant entertainment district. We urge you to support the expansion of the convention center. Thank you. Hi, uh, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Monica, and um, I'm voting on opposition number 15. And I fully support the town and country project of Sturge and Fairfax. Um, it will provide more than 300 units for housing, plus new jobs and shopping centers, and that's what the, the community needs. I live around here, and it will be a great thing to just, you know, get this going and also because it's just empty parking lots sitting there. And like I said, it would create many jobs and also housing, which the community is very, it's very needed in it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Piedmont Brown. I'm speaking for Local 433. I'd like to add my comments to item 6 and item 11. Regarding item 6, we believe that our city should see more developments like this. The developer who understands the community to be at, at heart of this, every move with the project. Great development is bottom up. The community input and the hiring of responsible general contractors who will prioritize the working men and women on the site at the forefront. We fully support the project. Approval. Item 11, we find the applicant's project plans to more than accommodate the true needs of the community with regard to the housing. But more importantly, their choice to bring long-term economic benefits to the city. Projects like this make a stronger downtown. Local responsible contractors to ensure a project of high quality and beneficial economic impact have been part of this plan for start. The end result of those processes that put the community first is projects just like these. We urge you to approve the project and let this work. Thank you. Caller with a number ending in 9607, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Joyce Clyfield. I'm speaking on agenda item 14. And as a 40 year plus year resident and community activist in the Beverly Grove area, I offer my full and enthusiastic support of this project. I did all comments previously made in favor of this project and would like to offer two additional points. As a former very active parent with El uh, Hancock Park Elementary School, um, over 20 years ago, we tried to get a lot of work done that 
Holland Partners is finally helping us, helping us achieve. Um, my children are no longer there. They're grown and in col out of college, but they're a true community neighbor. Uh, the other issue is they have really helped the wheelchair station, uh, LAPD, by updating their um, break room and uh, improving officer morale there tremendously and showing them that they have a supportive community. Um, there is no reason to not uh, allow this project to go forward, and we hope that we'll see this happening soon. Thank you. My name is Jacqueline Romero speaking on item nine. I am here representing the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce to urge you to approve the actions related to the convention center expansion and modernization project. Ensuring that our convention center is modernized and globally competitive is critical to a strong tourism industry, which is a cornerstone of our local economy. The expansion of the convention center was planned before the pandemic and is even more vital now to support the economic recovery of the region and to better position Los Angeles as a premier destination for conventions and tourism. The recommended signage program facilitates the modernization of the existing signage program while maintaining the bright vibrancy of the area with thoughtful design integration. We urge you to support the proposal as well as the proposed modifications which would allow handle a limit of 600, which is appropriate for a vibrant entertainment district located in the downtown business district and which is consistent with adjacent developments, revisions to provisions for pillar signs, increased freeway edge signs flexibility, ensure adequate parking to accommodate the new hall and arena parking needs with a modest increase in parking. The project sign program represents a substantial improvement over the existing conditions through better design integration of the signs into the architecture, complements existing LA Live signage to create a sense of place, and overall is a small increase in signage from current conditions and less than allowed under the specific plan. We encourage you to Thank move you, forward. Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. Before you should... Hello, caller. Yes, we can hear you. Me llamo Marina Luna y estoy a favor de la agenda número 15. Estoy aquí para apoyar el proyecto de Town and Country. Estoy emocionada porque por fin se reconstruirá esta propiedad, ya que será emocionante y muy actualizado. Apoya el uso mixto de las viviendas. Tendrán nuevas tiendas, nuevos estacionamientos y nuevo diseño. La ciudad de Los Ángeles necesita nuevas unidades. Por eso les pido hoy que aprueben este proyecto. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Hmm. Mr. Chair, do you like me to translate that for the record? Sure. Thank you. Uh, the speaker, her name is Marina Luna. She's called in support of item 15. She's excited about the project. It's a mixed-use project. She likes the design of the project and that it will contain additional housing needs. Thank you. So what will you do with that? Thank you. We can go to the next caller. Caller with the number ending in 5572, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Doug Summers. I'm calling in support of items 6 and 11. I'm a hardworking fire sprinkler fitter for over 25 years. I'm proud that my career in making livable wages and benefits is being supported by these developers and their choice to build ethically and sustainably. The skilled craft will continue to support responsible development. And what I mean is the developer chooses contractors who will hire local workers, pay livable wages in exchange for the highest quality, in a nutshell, to get it built right. We couldn't be more proud to support both projects. Please join Local 709 and all hardworking members of the skilled trade in supporting these projects. Thank you.
Yes, good afternoon, uh, Plum Committee members. My name is Stephen Tan. I'm the chairman of the Westwood Community Council. I'm calling in reference to agenda item number 15, which is a matter of Habibi Cafe, Broxton Avenue, and Westwood Village. I'm calling to um, urge that you deny the appeal that is uh, before you today. But beyond that, um, we're calling in to urge that you support the position of the police department, LAPD, our, our city attorney, and other offices. My understanding is that since the hearing was held in May of 20. 21 last year, 13 months ago, that there is new evidence of a continued and additional serious violation, and I understand that LAPD will have a different recommendation. We are in support of the position of LAPD and urge that you would please support this location that has been the site of a fatal shooting Christmas 2005 and a nearly fatal shooting just two years ago during the pandemic when no business was supposed to be operating and yet a person nearly lost their life due to illegal operations at this location. We urge you to please listen carefully to the recommendations of the police and ensure public safety in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the number ending in 5180, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, my name is Desiree Valencia. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Desiree Valencia. I've lived in Los Angeles for my entire life. Um, calling as a resident who lives on the border between here and Sunny San Francisco to support for the project on Sunset. The project itself is exciting. The outreach has clearly been stellar, and I agree with the vision of the people who want to build it. I would also be lying if I said I wasn't excited to get rid of the old building and have a spot of dead grass. I asked you respectfully approve it so we can get started on realizing sense of full potential. And in downtown, a lot of people want to live there. Not everyone who wants to can yet. People who do are quote unquote lucky, but we can't let them get up the ladder and then pull it up ourselves. We need buildings like this that offer another 340 apartments, whether they be studios or two bedrooms. There's no good reason to oppose this project and a lot of great ones to support it. Add community support to the list of all. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the number ending in 1403, please press star six to unmute yourself. Ah, ha, ha, ah, ah, all item, Chandler Kama. Speaker, uh, you may begin. Comment. You may begin. And all items, yeah. So, we have business, very good for business, for Bibi. Ah, Bibi Vargo. For you to go and drink, drink, lots of drink, drive down Wisher Boulevard, and put car in front of glass near into store. <laughs> You remind me, not this time, like Jose Weza, lots of drinks. Drink, drink is good for Americans. For us in China, we do not drink. We sit down, we wait for Americans all time, and we take your country. <laughs> now we have school, school garbage. They do not like that. The school teach people are stupid. Here, your people expand stupid by getting more school as support. Then we have convention center. Ah, convention center. You call white elephant. Yes. I call piece of shit. You should go those down and build pharmacia. I do it for you. All you have to do is get Jose Weaver at the prison and Thank you, Speaker. We can That's build your pharmacia. time. It will be gone. Now. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Margaret. I am calling regarding item 15. I just wanted to, to um, call to express my support for the Town and Country Project on 3rd and Fairfax. And I'm excited to see the property redesigned to better fit our community needs and to be more beneficial to the community. Thank you, and I hope you will support this project.
Caller with the number ending in 7685, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Andrew Fogg. I'm an attorney with Cox Castle Nicholson, and I'm speaking on item number 10. Our office represents the uh, trustees, the owners of the Bothwell Ranch, and we are, calling, we are requesting uh, that the city council deny the nomination to have the site be listed as a historic monument. An additional report was submitted uh, by Teresa Grimes that called into question many of the factual uh, underpinnings of the cultural um, monument uh, report that was submitted. Uh, it's incorrect in a number of uh, material respects and does not serve to basis as a reason to, uh, to designate this property as a landmark. Specifically, most of the orchard trees were uh, died and were replaced in the 1980s and the site would not qualify for a number of reasons. Secondly, if this site was to be designated, it would result in a uh, total taking of the property owner's property, uh, resulting in significant liability uh, to the city. And we respectfully urge you to decline the nomination. Thank you. Hello, my name is George Bocanegra. I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. I live in the local area, work and recreate in the vicinity of the project. I believe that I will be impacted by the environmental impact of the project. The city should require the project to be built utilizing a local and skilled and trained workforce. Local hire and skilled and trained workforce requirements reduce construction related environmental impact while benefiting the local economy. In a recent 2020 report titled Putting California on a High Road, a Jobs and Climate Action Plan for 2030, the California Workforce Development Board concluded that investing in growing, diversifying and upskilling California's workforce can positively affect returns on climate mitigation efforts. Moreover, this year, the South Coast Air Quality Management District found that the use of local state certified apprenticeship programs or a skilled and trained workforce with a local hire component can result in air pollutant Thank you, reduction. Speaker. That's your time. Other cities, thank you. Hello, my name is Juan Trappi. I'm the representative of Habibi Cafe. I would like to speak regarding the situation with the restaurant. I have been around for the last 20 years. I never had any problems in my cafe since the incident that happened two years ago, which is during the pandemic, which is this is something happening through the whole California and everywhere else in the United States. I feel I've been discriminated by everybody else for putting the finger on me. Are they are going to put the fingers also on all other the places that they had. Also the same situation was shooting at their places, like the Nice Guy restaurant or Paris Cafe or Biblos or Maceo or a lot of the Italian cuisine. I feel this is only discrimination against me, which I don't understand that why they are putting me in their mind which they have to target other business and other restaurants like the way they are targeting me. And I don't understand who that guy speaks saying is that this he's put on me in his mind for the last 20 years. It's like he it doesn't have nothing to do with his life except he's just walking around and making everybody's you, life That's is miserable. Time. There's hundred restaurants and hundreds of My name is Susan Winsberg, president of Franklin Quarter Community, speaking as an individual. I'd like to speak on items 3, 12, 10, and 14. You may, you may begin. Can you hear me? Yes, you may Thank begin. you. Um, regarding item number 12 first, um, Tex Restaurant, it um, does not qualify for a CEQA resemption 
um, or for the Skippy approvals because it is nominated as a, a historic cultural monument by Survey LA, LA Conservancy, Cultural Heritage Commission, so it cannot be demolished. So it doesn't qualify for the Skippy approvals. And then regarding the billboards, number three, there's been no publicly reviewed environment um, EIR report. Um, it's it this need this came out too suddenly. There have there have been no traffic safety studies and it's well known that digital billboards cause accidents and it demands further study. So um, this this needs to be continued. Um, I do support the Bothwell nomination and then regarding number 14, I support the appeal due to public safety. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Hi, members of Plum. My name is Francisco Medina, and I would like to speak on uh, agenda number nine. I am here representing the Salvation Army LA Retro Community Center, a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing educational and recreational programs for children and families in the Pico Union community for over 70 years. We are located just walking distance from the Convention Center. I urge the Commission to approve the actions related to the Convention Center expansion and modernization projects. Um, our families have greatly benefited directly from the workforce opportunities at LA Live and we welcome additional opportunities. Most importantly, we hope that the project will be developed by AEG, a very trusted business with deep ties to the community and a proven track record maximizing public benefit for the betterment of the community. Salvation Army LA Red Shield has worked with AEG for over 20 years. We have experienced firsthand the great benefits of responsible development. LA Live venues and its signage have enhanced the area in a dynamic and exciting way made to be feel as part of the community. Our families have been to countless events, Thanksgiving celebrations, ice skating. Thank you, Speaker. Tiger That's your Live time. Convention Center. Project. Hello, my name is Tony Brown, and I'm calling on item number nine. Members of Plum, I represent Heart of Los Angeles, OLA, a nonprofit dedicated to providing uh, underrepresented kids and youth uh, an equal chance to succeed through a variety of different after school programs in the arts, athletics, and health and wellness. I'm here to urge you to approve the actions related to the Convention Center expansion and modernization project. As you've heard, these, these projects will create all the great jobs that we need uh, for the communities uh, in and around this, the beautiful uh, area there. Most importantly, we're excited that. Uh, they'll likely be developed by AEG, who've been a trusted uh, business with uh, very deep ties to Heart of Los Angeles and the greater community. Heart of LA has a 20-year history of working with AEG. We've, they've supported our youth through a wide variety of different ways, from elementary age students to high school and even those uh, who are now alumni in college and beyond. And they've really helped to awaken the downtown LA area. This project's received its thorough environmental review, I know, and there's been extensive outreach to the project benefit, which I'm familiar with. The signage and everything is, you know, uh, they've requested has been supported by community. And I believe it's going to further enhance Thank the you, feeling Speaker. down there That's at LA Live and the Convention Center. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Patrick Frank. I represent Scenic Los Angeles, and I'd like to speak on item three, which is the proposal to allow digital billboards on Metro-owned properties. This is a bad idea for any number of reasons. First, there are no takedown provisions in it, which means that it'll add to our visual blight. Most of the public opposes digital billboards, and in fact, they're unsafe because they contribute to accidents by distracting drivers. And then power, digital power usage is also a problem. According to industry numbers, average, every digital billboard uses an average equal, equivalent to about 10 Los Angeles households. So if they put up 30 signs, that's 300 homes or a small neighborhood. So therefore, a yes vote is the wrong vote. A yes vote on item three would be degrading our quality of life and wasting energy. So I urge you members to vote no on item three. Thank you.
caller with a number ending in 7543. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, my name is Juan Nomades. I'm a board member with the Sun Valley Area Neighborhood Council. I'm calling on item 3, Council File 22-0392. Calling because to express my position um, to the Plum Committee's proposal to install new advertising structures on public right of way as part of Metro Transit Community Program. I oppose the program for the following reasons. The program will only exacerbate critical issues related to digital billboards and driver distraction, coupled with the city's increasing number of accidents, injuries, and deaths of pedestrians and bicyclists as myself. And the program cannot be allowed to move forward without environmental and safety studies and, and without more opportunities for public input. I yield the balance of my time. Thank you. Both no. Hello, my name is Doug Haynes, and I'm speaking on item 12, the tax restaurant development. I'm calling to point out, as others have, that the project does not qualify for sustainable community CEQA exemption. First, Skippy projects are required to be consistent with the limitations of the underlying zoning. However, the applicant seeks six off-menu incentives plus a 51% density bonus through a CUP. Second, the project would demolish, as has been pointed out by many others, a recognized historical resource. Whether or not the city council deems the building a local landmark is irrelevant to its historic status. As pointed out in a number of letters that have been submitted into the record, because of the demolition of a historic building, an EIR is required in this case. Please vote no on item 12 and require proper environmental review. Thank you. Sir, can you hear me? Is, is that you, Mr. Attorney? I want to speak on all items, like 3, 8, 9, 11, 14, and non-agenda public comment. How much time do I get? Who? You, have, you have two minutes. Uh, what's your name, sir, for the record, please? Sir, your public comment two has minutes. begun. You have two minutes. The clock's going. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Monkeypox. Now, regarding housing and development, um, we've known for years that, yes, we need our unions to help collaborate in an effort to sustain the city requirements of affordable housing because it is, it is in the interest of public relief, like when I piss on Mr. Dawson's bald head. And then we talk about these high risers. The more high risers we get, the more people will be able to live close to work, close to downtown, as some of the asshole speakers brought up in their presentations, Mr. Monkey Pox of Plum. Now on to my non-agenda public comment, if you don't mind. 40 QSC 1983, fuck developer greed, and fuck you, Mr. Monkey Pox, for affordable housing failure, cost. You failed this community development. It's failed. Fuck expensive projects, fuck bureaucratic bureaucracy projects, and fuck California, HHH, and H, and all these fucking developers like Jose Luis Weizar, CR220, CR00326, JFW, nigga, for the record, you get it, Dawson? You fucking monkey. Next caller. <laughs> caller with a number ending in 6123. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Caller with a number ending in 6123. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself.
Hi, my name is Nicole Colette. I'm one of the owners of Hibachi Coffee. We are a late night food establishment in Westwood Village, right across from Habibi Cafe. This item is regarding item 15 regarding Habibi Cafe. It was brought to my attention that um, the Westwood Village issued an impact statement that we were not a part of. We've not had any issues with Habibi Cafe. In fact, we actually selected this location last year due to the fact that it is across the street from Habibi because they're also open late and they've already established a late night clientele over the past 20 years. If they were required to change their hours or their operations, it's going to directly impact our business as well due to the fact that we thrive off of the late night business and we share a lot of mutual customers. Habibi Cafe staff, operators, and everyone over there has been nothing but courteous and generous to us. If there's ever been any issues in our establishment, they come over and assist us with that. We have nothing but positive things to say about Habibi Cafe, and we just hope that you will not make them make any adjustments to their hours. Thank you so much. Hello, uh, I'd like to speak on items number 12 and number 14. May I have two minutes? Yes, you may begin. Thank you. I'm Carol Citroni with the Silver Lake Heritage Trust. As you may remember, we nominated Tex for historic designation, which the Cultural Heritage Commission approved in December of 2020. Our nomination is supported by the OHR, the LA Conservancy, the Echo Park Historical Society, respected historians citywide, several historic analyses, and several, nearly 5,000 community members who signed our petition preserve neighborhood history. But the main takeaway was the breathtakingly presumptuous amendment introduced to this same committee by Council Member O'Farrell last year. Now this amendment, which you approved unanimously, as you always do, undermines the Cultural Heritage Ordinance and state law, but proved to be a wonderful device with which to prop up the pretense of preservation in order to streamline environmental review of a profoundly impactful project. You have been provided a mountain of solid evidence showing that text is historic and that this project is ineligible. Please do the right thing and reject the Skippy nomination, the recommendation. Uh, on item number 14, I am urging you to support the appeal due to the number of pedestrian casualties. Two of them have been fatal on the perimeter of this property. The project would more than double the density but so far the EIR has been completely silent about safety issues. There have been no studies or considerations of the project, how it will exacerbate the already dangerous conditions, nor does it provide any mitigation me measures. The EIR needs to address these issues, and until it does, I ask that you please grant the appeal in the interest of public safety. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, this is Stephen Resnick. I'm secretary of the Westwood Neighborhood Council. I'm uh, calling about uh, item number 15 from EB Cafe. Um, we would urge you to deny the appeal. And further, we unanimously passed a motion and uh, submitted a, uh, a community impact statement to uh, uh, support the revocation of this business. And uh, further, we support what we understand is the city attorney, the Los Angeles Police Department, and the UCPD in uh, their request uh, for revocation. Uh, this business was, was put on notice with all uh, of their uh, issues, and yet in, in recent, the re last uh, year, they've continued uh, to violate uh, various uh, uh, codes and such. Um, there's been 190 calls for service and 51 investigative reports. We urge you to uh, revoke uh, the business. Further, I'm the president of the Westwood, Neighbor uh, the Westwood Homeowners Association, and my board also supports revocation. Thank you.
caller with the number ending in 7588. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Mike Linnermero, and I'm speaking on agenda number seven, which is regarding the Mr. Spirit um, nuisance issues. And um, I would like to let the committee know that I have worked and lived in Los Angeles for many years as a student and as, and as a professional, and have driven by and stopped by the Mr. Spirit's liquor store in the plaza area on my way to study and work at the University of Southern California. I've grown to know the community and the family-owned store throughout my years, um, and have always felt safe stopping at the store. And so with the time um, that I have left, I would like to voice my support for the May family and for the Mr. Spirit, as the plaza has been much improved and is definitely part of a vibrant entrepreneurial community in Los Angeles. Thank you for allowing me to voice my support. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is David Mungia. I live on the other side of Sunset of Bellevue, and I'm calling to voice my support and to speak on uh, item number six, which is close to me, as well as item number 11, which is uh, close to where I work. I'm a fan of the proposed plan on Sunset, and I think it can't come soon enough. The city and this area are ready for more development. We are ready for more housing and a true uh, public open space to spend, uh, spend time with our families and friends. The historic site where the hospital and water district once stood can become a center for the area where people will enjoy themselves with downtown on the horizon. I think we should make it happen. Meanwhile, for the downtown project, the design is great, affordable housing is included, and a lot of market rate housing is also included. The development fits right in, height-wise and style-wise. It's also modular, which will make building it fast and painless. I don't see a single reason to delay on either of these. Approve them both. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Daniela Diaz. I'm speaking on IM 6 and 11. I live up the street and I'm calling in as a very pro development person to express my support for two of your projects today. So it's going to be the 1111 on one sunset and the 121 on West 3rd. This project like literally becomes part of LA Skyline when it's built and it's gonna take an old but significant hilltop into the future. I don't think I've seen anything else flow dynamics proposed. Like it's just so much housing. A building worth of affordable housing, I don't think it gets as good. And as a supporter of development, I'm also speaking up for adding density in downtown. That's what the project up there three will do. And it's about time. Like we need more affordable housing and this project offers that. So please approve these projects, please. Thanks for listening. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Omar Galindo, and I am part of Local 78. We support two projects today, items, 11, items 6 and 11. For item 6, the applicant's proposed project is not the kind you see every day. It will, change, it will transform the area. It will add a lot of housing. It will be an investment in the neighborhood right there on Sunset and add a lot to the area that needs good development the most. But most important of all, it is going to be done by skilled and highly trained members of, our, of the local workforce. It will be a job that supports everyone in the community, especially we, the workers. We support item 11's approval too. The economy depends upon hardworking people like us, and we have to push the developers to build with a clear vision of inclusion for all members of the community. We believe the proposed project should enrich the community they sit in. That's why we support them both. Thank you. Caller with a number ending in 1265, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mike Tex, owner of Tex, item 12. There are a few points I'd like to clarify. Had we not embarked on our survival plan with Holland for a grossly oversized, energy inefficient building, 
It has been repeatedly remodeled with an eye to make it look more like the original downtown. We surely would have already closed our doors. Aging infrastructure that requires constant costly repair coupled with a sizable mortgage and related property taxes prompted a plan to actually save tax, not to destroy tax, as opponents say. Uh, most of our dining space was designed as banquet rooms, which have become less important. There's just less meetings out there. Ride shares have thankfully reduced demand for large parking lots, and that's been a great thing. So to survive, I created a plan to create a smaller footprint, uh, a lounge and a dining room that are very Thank you, Speaker. Good. That's your They're time. Vibrant. But all the other rooms... Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, I, I, I don't, I, that person was still speaking and you called me to speak right now. Uh, but I would like to speak on items 6 and 11, please. You may begin. Okay, thank you, sir. My name is Ray, and I'm a member of the Anchor Church of downtown LA. Uh, for item 6, I spoke on this project at the last hearing. My reason for supporting this project is housing. Everyone in LA deserves a chance to have good, safe, and modern housing. We are in a crisis where people do not have access to it and may not and may not even be able to afford it. We can't pretend that this isn't happening anymore. We need a lot more projects like this. With with 76 very low income units, we are giving more people a chance. And as for item 11, we support this project as well. As I said, I, be, I believe we should be building in LA where everyone is able to live and grow in a positive way. Adding 331 new households to downtown is so important. Thank you, and God bless you guys. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Caller with the number ending in 4379, please state your name and which item you're speaking on. Hi, uh, my name is Krista Amagon. I'm speaking on number uh, item number 14. Um, I'm a parent of a child at Hancock Park School and a resident of the area. I support the development proposed by Holland Group, and um, I believe it should be enacted as, as soon as, as is uh, possible to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the number ending in 6123, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, my name is Barbara Brady. I'm speaking on behalf of the Westside Neighborhood Council. I'm speaking on item number three. I appreciate the full Neighborhood Council time. It is premature for the city to consider any ordinance that would allow the drafting of a, of, a, of a measure that will move the Metro Transit Communications Network forward at this time. In fact, it's shocking to know that a memorandum of understanding had been signed in December of last year without any public discourse or outreach to neighborhood councils or communities that will be affected by the digital billboards that will be on their streets and on the freeways adjacent to their communities. This is wrong. Having a meeting today after a three-day holiday without any notice is wrong. This is a huge problem. The failure for the city to address signage issues in a comprehensive manner is a failure in policy. I challenge this plum, this planning committee, to stop considering programs that litter and pollute our public. It is the public right-of-way with more and more changing, dangerous digital changing messages. Instead, the city needs to think about how to minimize sign blight while maximizing revenue from signage. The city is currently proposing an Ike program to have hundreds of changing digital signs on our sidewalks and parkways. We have staff at shelters. This is a failure of policy. We urge you not to approve this measure now and to send this back for the outreach that's needed.
Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Speaker. Hi, my name is James Breedlove, and I'm here to speak on item number nine. I'm here representing the Bridge Village Foundation, a nonprofit organization that seeks to remove the barriers of race, poverty, ignorance, and despair through mentoring, educational support, healthcare awareness, and community uplift. I urge you to approve the actions related to the community center expansion and modernization project. Our organization was established to instill hope, raise aspirations, and improve life trajectories of African Americans and people of color. The Bridge Business Foundation has worked with AEG in, in a variety of ways, including job partnership programs designed to give students the opportunity to learn about careers, opportunities in sports, music, and live events. The projects uh, just discussed today will create live wage jobs in construction, hospitality, and facility management that will provide meaningful job opportunities and play an important role in strengthening communities. Creating a world where all youth realize the fullness of their potential requires partnerships with organizations that share this vision. Organizations like Thank ABC. you, Speaker. That's your time. We are enthusiastic. Caller with the number ending in 8132. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Yes, my name is Charlie Fisher, 140 South Avenue 57. I originally wrote the nomination for HCM on the uh, property at Tex Restaurant, and uh, the designation was for the entire building. We realized, of course, that the project could go through, and we have no problem with that. We have no problem with certain parts of the building being demolished, but the main part of the building, uh, the facade and the uh, rooms up front, are an important part of that monument nomination. Uh, the designation, as it was approved, is really a joke in many respects. It's also probably illegal. You don't declare salvage as a historic cultural monument. Now, the project can be reconfigured with a taller building, such as the historic Glenfed building across the street. The sequel requires a full EIR on the project because it does involve the demolition of a historic resource, a resource that was declared not only by the Cultural Heritage Commission, but was called out in Survey LA and was called out in many other sources and most historians agree, in fact, as far as I know, every historian that I know agrees that this is a historic building. Therefore, um, what is happening here is not what is not correct and is probably illegal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with a number ending in 4100, please press star six to unmute yourself. Hi, this is Garrett Hollander uh, of <clears throat> 1420 Reeves LLC, which owns a neighboring property on matter number 13, uh, which is a redevelopment of what is currently a car wash. Um, we support the development as proposed uh, for several reasons. One, um, from an economic standpoint, there's been a lot of stagnancy commercially. Um, there's a shopping center that's Pressing and um, it is not, it, it's attracting a, an element that is dangerous. Um, number two, it satisfies the need for housing, um, which was also supported in a comparable building on Reeves, um, recently approved by the city for the last couple of years. And probably the most important reason is from a health and safety standpoint. Um, I, I, I was in the, uh, the area and based on the car wash that is there, um, I, it attracts a lot of uh, elements that cause, um, well, that is engaging in a lot of criminal activity, including um, heroin and other illegal drug use. Thank you, caller. That's your um, time. Caller with the number ending in 1516, please press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Chair? We can hear you. Thank you um, for Mr. Chair and honorable members of the Plum Committee. My name is Damon Johnson. I am the president of the Empowerment Congress Central Neighborhood Council. Uh, and I am here to um, uh, set our position in support of 
the decision made by the zoning administrator in regards to item number seven, Mr. Spirits Liquor, as well as item number eight, Tom's Liquor, in regards to their new condition. These, specifically Tom Liquor, item number seven, has been a continued nuisance in our community as a resident, a father. This liquor store has been non-responsible to our community, and it has increased drugs in our area. It has allowed prostitution on that corner. I'm not sure if other folks who get on here saying they know the community, if you know the community this well, then you would know that there is no responsible ownership happening at Mr. Spirits Liquor. And so we just urge the committee to uphold the administrator's decision so that our community can be a little safer and that we can start to ensure that liquor store owners in our area become more responsible. Thank you very much, and I yield my time. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Johnson, how many callers do we have left on the queue? We have four callers, Mr. Chair. All right. Madam City Attorney, that gives us four minutes. That will take us to 340. That will be about an hour and 40 minutes of public comment. So hopefully that will suffice. So we're going to limit it to the next five minutes. Caller with a number ending in 8990, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, this is Dave Miller. I'm calling regarding number 12. And I just wanted to just support the Charlie Fisher, the preservationist, and Carol Citrone. This thing was nominated Cultural Heritage Commission to be designated and saved, and it should have been. And the preservation throughout the city, council members should not have the power to trample all over the L.A. history and historic resources. And it's gone on way too much, and it has shown in the primary re-election poll. So I hope that's a good message to all of you guys. Adios. Hi, this is Brian Haig. I'm speaking on item 12. I just want to sort of reiterate, I guess, agreement to a lot of these earlier comments regarding the concerns about the historical preservation, also that just the size and scope of this project, the number of off-menu items in it, I think make an EIR all the more important, especially as a local resident. I'm not sure if this is relevant, but I'm also concerned that there was no posted notice of this hearing on the property that was accessible, if there is one. Thank you. Yes, hello. My name is Michael Gonzalez. I am the operations manager here at Westwood Village in Westwood. I'm on the maintenance, safety, and pressure washing in the area. We continue to have incidents here going on at the Habibi Cafe. My crew arrives as early as 5.30 in the morning, and we have currently observed observations of vehicles continuing to spin out, peel out, verbal altercations, as well as physical altercations taking place at 5.30 in the morning. Yes, this place is open until 5.30 in the morning when the patrons finally leave, intoxicated, leaving behind various debris, bottles, trash, eatery packages. Please, we are in total support with LAPD and the DA's request, and hopefully put a resolution to this. Thank you. Hi, Alan Apshez speaking on number 12 for the applicant. Please approve the project exemption for the Tech Square project, which has been recommended by the planning department. One of the central objectives of the project is to provide new premises for Tech's restaurant in the same place it's been located since 1962. The 
project also will provide 166 apartments, including 24 very low-income units. Mike Tex, whose family founded the restaurant in 1927 and has continually operated since then, has told you that even before COVID-19, their legacy business was facing closure due to its oversized and aged building, which, has been re which rendered the business no longer profitable. He has designed new right-sized premises to continue his business. Indeed, the only reason the restaurant remains open today is that it's receiving free rent from the applicant while the project is being processed. The Conservancy and Silver Lake Heritage Trust oppose the project and insist the restaurant building be preserved. They don't care about they don't care about that preserving the building will force closure of the business that gives the building life. Full Council, however, and your committee, Cultural Heritage Committee, has already determined that the business itself is what's historically Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. And should be preserved. And that concludes public comment in the allotted time, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that takes us to a regular business. Um, Mr. Mejia, I think we have uh, a request to continue an item, uh, followed by our consent calendar. There is. Uh, there is a request to continue item 15. Um, this is an appeal by the property operator, Jan Fathi, uh, who's appealing the zoning administrator impos imposition of corrective conditions relative to the approval of Habib Cafe. Uh, the request is to continue it to uh, date uncertain. Items that are on consent are items one, two, and three. Item one, this is a report from city planning and a resolution of Pharaoh Praetorian with the accompanying findings and map requesting the council to activate the restaurant beverage program within the boundaries of council district 13. The recommendation is to adopt the resolution inclusive of the map and findings that have been uploaded to the council file and as recommended by city planning in its report for the general version of the restaurant beverage program in council district 13. Item two, this is um, an environmental impact report, the related CEQA findings, and a report from the city attorney and a draft ordinance to authorize the adoption and of an amendment to the development agreement with Next Century Partners, LLC. The recommendation is to approve the city attorney prepare ordinance. Item three is a motion for Corey and Harris Dawson instructing city planning along with the assistance of city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance to allow digital off-site signs to be displayed on structures that are part of the transportation communication network program between the city and Metro. The recommendation therein is to adopt the motion. That concludes the consent items, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd also like to recommend that we take four and five uh, in addition to one through three on consent. Sure, item four, this is a report from the city attorney and two draft ordinances to regulate commercial cannabis activity as requested by the city council. One, a draft ordinance regarding a storefront retailer emblem program for licensed commercial cannabis businesses. And two, a draft ordinance regarding public health inspections of licensed cannabis businesses in conjunction with the County Department of Public Health. Recommendation therein is to approve the two city attorney prepare ordinances relative to a store from emblem program and the public health inspections for commercial cannabis businesses. Item five, this is a motion Buscaino Harris Dawson instructing city planning in consultation with city attorney to prepare and present an interim control ordinance to prohibit the issuance of permit or certificates of occupancy for open storage, truck parking, and container storage on all industrially zoned properties within the Wilmington Harbor City Community Plan Area to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. The recommendation is to adopt the motion and to note that the location is the I-10 freeway. That concludes the consent items, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, I see Mr. Lee's hand up. Is that on purpose? Yes. Uh, all right. I, I was just, I was curious, Roberta, who, who asked for the continuance for item number five? Was it, oh, sorry, 15. 
Was that the council office? I believe that's the case, Mr. Lee. The case? What do you mean? I believe that's the case. I believe that's the request. It came from CD5. Oh, sorry. Did that come during the meeting or did that come before the meeting? I believe that came during the meeting, Mr. Lee. During the meeting? Yes, during the meeting. I know. I just don't know why that request didn't come to us in the beginning. We just took an hour and a half of public comment on this item, and now we're going to continue it. Yes. That request didn't come to us before the meeting. The chair has similar questions, Mr. Lee. I'll never get that hour and a half back. Yes. All right. Any further discussion? Do we have someone from Council District 5? Yes, this is Dylan from Council District 5, Senior Planning Deputy. I can try to briefly explain. We were hoping to be able to act on this request today. However, the council member would like to explore a full revocation of this site, something that has not been properly agendized for this meeting. So that was discovered during the public comments. So sorry if there was any additional public comments there, but we'll be pushing this item to hopefully a future meeting where we can explore a full revocation of the use. Thanks. Thank you for that explanation. We'll look forward to hearing more about this case. Mr. Chair, I need to call the roll for items 1 through 5, if I may, sir. Yes. Okay. For items 1 through 5, on consent, I will call the roll. Councilman Marquis Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Gilbert Cedillo. Absent. Council member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council member John Lee. Aye. Mr. Chair, I'm available to vote. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Thank you, sir. And Councilwoman, Councilmember Lee, I believe I called them, and Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent. And this is also inclusive of item 15 to continue to update on certain committee members. All right. Thank you. Happy to be joined by Councilmember Cedillo. That takes us to item number 6 at this time. Yes. Item 6. This is an environmental impact report, related CEQA findings, and a report from the Planning Commission recommending an ordinance to remove a building line, which is no longer necessary for the construction of a mixed-use development that is located in Council District 1. All right. We have a report from the Department of City Planning. I believe Ms. Kathleen King is with us. Good afternoon, committee members. Kathleen King with City Planning. The request before the committee is a recommendation to City Council to approve the removal of a building line for the 11-11 Sunset Project. In February, the CPC certified the project's EIR, recommended approval of the request to remove a variable building line along the northern side of Beaudry Avenue between Alpine Street and Sunset Boulevard, and approved the remaining entitlements. The request to remove the building line would allow for the project design to better utilize the area along Beaudry Avenue. If the existing building line were to remain, this would result in an approximately 55-foot setback along Beaudry, effectively reducing the on-site area that can be developed. Planning staff is available for any questions. Thank you. All right. This is an item in Council District 1. Mr. Cedillo, I'll open it up to you for discussion, or if Mr. Gubaton is here. Yes, we'd like to move to adopt the ordinance. I mean, we've been working long and hard on this. Everybody's complying. It's a real opportunity for us to construct a really noteworthy project in an environment that's transitional, and that this could be one of those transformative projects. All right. Thank you so much. I'll second Mr. Cedillo's motion. If you'll call the roll, Mr. Mejia, if there's no further discussion. Yes. Councilman Harris-Dawson. Yes. Councilman Cedillo. Yes. Councilman Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Councilman Lee. Aye. Councilwoman Rodriguez, absent four members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you so much. That takes us to item number seven. Item seven, this is a categorical exemption from CEQA, the related findings, a planning department report, and an appeal filed by Jennifer May, Kevin May, Ka Pai Gwen, owners, operators, uh, relative to the zoning administrator's revocation and discontinuance of alcohol use for the property located at 6816, 6818, 6820, 6822, 6824, and 6826 Southwestern Avenue in CD8. All right, uh, we'll have a uh, report from the Associate Zoning Administrator on this. Good afternoon. My name is Charlie Rausch. I'm the, can you hear me? Yes. I'm using a new good. computer, so. You're good. Um, here. Okay. Chair Dawson, uh, Harris Dawson, members of the committee, my name is Charlie Rausch. I'm the zoning administrator assigned to this case. The case before you is an appeal of the fourth condition, condition compliance review, uh, which resulted in the department recommending denial of the case of Mr. Spirit Liquor Store, which is located in a mini shopping center located on the northeast corner of Western and 69th Street. The case was initiated by the city at the request of Council District 8. Uh, because of continued illegal activity on the site, as well as general disruptive dis disrepair and lack of maintenance. Planning department staff on this case was Iris Wong, who compiled a police reports on the site, conducted a field check of the site with the senior lead officer of the 77th Street Precinct, and did an extensive condition compliance report. Uh, she is available today to answer any questions you have on the uh, particulars of the data. The condition compliance review found that the operators of Mr. Spirit were not compliant with the following conditions. Number three, discouraging loitering, illegal and criminal activities on the site. The field check showed graffiti and loitering on the site. Uh, number six, the security guard be present. Um, there was no security guard at the time of the uh, field checks and the LAPD stated that there was no consistent guards present, presence at the store. The operator informed the staff that a new contract uh, had been signed, but the staff has not seen it. That there would be no loitering of, at the store parking lot and the sidewalk. Staff observed loitering, as well as I did on my own field check in the parking lot and on the sidewalk. Uh, signage that was to prohibit loitering and public drinking, as well as advising no trespassing, no prostitution, no drugs or drug dealing, no loitering, no weapons to be prominently displayed on the site. Uh, staff observed that the sign included some of these items but did not include admonitions against trespassing, prostitution, drugs, weapons, or that the property was to be patrolled. Item number 10, a complaint resolution was posted with a phone number posted that was not present. Uh, at least the phone number was not present. That there be no graffiti on the site and there was graffiti on the site which was observed by staff. Uh, property included street, sidewalk, gutter, and parking areas be free of trash and debris. The site showed trash and debris, including broken glass, empty beer bottles, abandoned furniture on the sidewalk and in the alley. The senior lead officer stated that oftentimes he had to do a debris removal by himself. Uh, condition number 14, maintenance required daily sweeping of the parking lot and sidewalk. Again, the senior lead officer stated that oftentimes he was the person who had to clean up the area. Uh, there was partial compliance with the posted hours of operation, the exterior lighting of the site, prohibition on selling or giving out cups or containers as singles instead of as prepackaged containers, and the sale of ice in less than three pound bags. Public hearing, approximately 15 people spoke in opposition to the operation in favor of revocation. The senior lead officer spoke of his problems with the store and how he had to clean clean the area repeatedly. Uh, among the rest reports, uh, besides public drinking and consumption of alcohol, were for uh, carjacking, robbery, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, discharge of firearms, fighting and drug consumption and dealing, and an attempted murder. This was all happening in the parking area, sidewalks and alley, which is adjacent to the main walk route to the Horace Mann Intermediate School, two blocks to the west. This is also where the only signal um, controlled intersection between Florence Avenue to the south and 67th Street, approximately two to three blocks to the north. We received public testimony of parents walking their children out of the way to avoid the site. After the two hour hearing and testimony and the review of the compliance 
or the lack thereof, the department revoked the use of the site uh, of its deemed approved conditional use for alcohol sales for off-site consumption. Uh, included were four conditions for the closure of the store. There were a number of additional conditions that were loaded into the council file in case the uh, operators of the store, who are also the property owners of the mini mall, desire to be, remain in business as a convenience store without uh, alcohol sales. This being a site of a revocation, which has gone through four plan approvals as well as the original revocation. Um, the revocation is still in effect, even though uh, the liquor store has been uh, um, recommended for denial. But um, uh, if they open again, we should still have some of these conditions placed on the store. Uh, I'm available or Ms. Juan are available for any questions that you have. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, we'll hear from um, the appellant at this time for four minutes or less. Do we have an appellant on the line? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah appellant. Hi can, you, hi, can you hear me? Thank you. Hello? Hello. Fine. Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, members of the Plum Committee. My name is Kevin Mai, and I'm speaking on behalf of my family in regards to agenda item number seven. The decision made by the Office of Zoning Administration on our small business has been devastating for my family, especially for my parents who have worked there every single day for the past 20 years. This is their only source of income and is their livelihood. They have been part of this community and consider many of their customers family. If any of you have been to our store, you'll notice many of our customers who my parents have seen growing up refer to them as mama and papa as they walk into our store. 99% of our interactions with our customers are positive with very little issue. It is unfortunate that a select few individuals in the neighborhood, less than 1%, are creating such issues such as loitering and nuisance for many of our neighbors, this community, and this city. We have also been victims of these small few as well. We are not the authority. We ourselves have called the law enforcement and agencies to address dumping many times only to be targeted by these individuals as well. We stay there and we work there every single day. We have to be smart about how we interact with these individuals. I also want to, I also want to say that, uh, I also want to address that this area is a very, very difficult place to do business regardless of the business type. The issue on our corner is a complex one that affects many parties. Us as business owners, neighbors, of the community, law enforcement, and as well as policymakers. I think we can all agree that the purpose of this case is to find a solution to address these complaints and to protect the community members nearby. Let's find a fix that solves the problem with as little damage to all parties involved. We, of course, can only do what we can do to help address the situation. As a result, we have proactively taken upon ourselves as a business to do our part to alleviate and mitigate as many of these issues that have been reoccurring in the past. We've made some dramatic policy changes to these cases have been brought up for our business as well as to ensure that we are continuing to enforce the conditions that have been put in place. All that has been addressed by the VA have been taken care of since the complaint has been made uh, and, uh, and, that, and has been imposed to us by the city. Some examples of some additional proactive changes that we've made to how we operate our business is no small or no sales of small airplane alcohol bottles. We've, we've added additional surveillance camera on every single corner, specifically in the area in question where a lot of the prostitution and drug dealing is occurring with all the necessary signage such as no prostitution, no drug dealing, no trespassing, no loitering, uh, et cetera. We also have a trained security guard who has been consistently appearing. Uh, we've been dealing with a, a several different security companies um, and it's been difficult to find good work and good help and good people to come to actually uh, continue to do their job. But we've finally found a company that uh, has given us a guard that actually is up showing up on time and appearing in his security outfit throughout Thank the Thank you, Mr. Hours. Mai. That concludes we your time. Kind of doing... uh, thank you so much. Uh, I know we have the, the, uh, the detective from the 77th Division uh, on the line. I want to give... Uh, give him a few minutes to add any additional uh, comments to this matter. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Detective Dana Harris. I don't want to take too much of the time. Um, uh, thank you for allowing me a few moments to speak today 
I'll make my comments brief. Um, just to reiterate again what the uh, uh, what city planning had said, and this is from my eyes. I've got 34 years on the job, and have having gone past the location, having been at the location, having stopped at the location, seen as it, as has been stated before, the loitering, the prostitution, um, the trash, the debris, the broken bottles. I think we as a city have to want and demand uh, more of ourselves and we cannot allow this uh, to continue to take place. The loitering that's taking place in front of the location, um, the beer everywhere that is, at no, place, at no time or place can I tell somebody what their choices should be. However, we can as a city family demand that our businesses um, request more and demand more and that our businesses are up to par uh, with the best business practices in the city of Los Angeles. Um, each time that we request a security guard, I've gone to the location myself several times and I've not seen a security guard. Um, so if these things are being put in place, I have not seen them put in place as of yet. So um, I, I thank you all for your comments. Thank you so much, uh, Detective Harris. And uh, I will add as a council member, I have uh, personally witnessed everything that both the detective and the zoning administrator uh, describe uh, at different times of the day and different days of the week. This is not just a weekend thing or, or a nighttime thing. It's fairly consistent. Uh, and so I think it's time for us to uh, move with the recommendation to put forward um, uh, in this matter. So with that, I'll ask for a second. Uh, and if there's no further discussion, uh, Mr. Community, call the roll. Second. Uh, Second. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, with your indulgence, I need to state for the record the 23 additional conditions that are reflected in your letter dated May 16th, 2022, for the record. All 23 of them? <laughs> I've, been asked, I've been asked to do a synopsis as best as I can for each of those, Mr. Chair and committee members. By all means, yes. Okay, so Council District 8 submitted a letter dated May 16th, 2022. The letter states that the Councilman of the district stands, stands behind the Associate Zoning Administrator, Charlie Rausch, and his decision to discontinue the operation of the liquor store, known as Mr. Spirit Liquor, for the sale of a, of a full line of beer, wine, and distilled spirits for off-site consumption. The letter notes that there are 23 additional conditions, number five through 27, in addition to the four conditions imposed by Zoning Administrator Charlie Rauch. In the event that the property owner and or business owner operator chooses to, dis to continue operation as a conven convenience market with no alcohol sales, these are uh, the conditions. Condition uh, five, hours of operation. The property shall adhere to the hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Condition six, code compliance, area height and use regulations of the zone classification of the property shall be complied with. Condition seven, the authorized use shall be conducted at all times with due regard to the character of the surrounding district. Eight, condition eight, the owner of the property as well as the business owner and manager shall comply with all applicable laws and conditions. Nine, a copy of this action and conditions shall be retained on the premises along with other permits and shall be made available to all enforcement personnel on demand. Condition 10, the consumption of alcoholic beverages on the property is prohibited. Condition 11, loitering on the property is not permitted. Condition 12, the business owner shall be responsible for prominently posting and maintaining signs prohibiting loitering or public drinking at the entrance of the facility. Condition 13, the operator shall provide a phone number and a name of the owner or leasee to contact for community complaints. Condition 14, lighting shall be sufficient to make persons who use the parking area or front of the premises easily, easily discernible to law enforcement personnel. Condition 15, all graffiti on the site shall be removed or painted over 
in the same color as the surface to which it is applied within 24 hours of occurrence. Condition 16, the property, including any adjacent street, adjacent alley, sidewalks, gutter, and parking areas shall be maintained in a neat and an attractive condition at all times. Condition 17, the applicant shall be responsible for maintaining free of debris or litter the area adjacent to the premises over which it has control. Condition 18, open areas devoted to trash, storage, or other storage shall not be located adjacent to any residential use or shall be so buffered as to not result in noise, odor, or debris impacts on the residential uses. Condition 19, public telephones shall not be permitted on the property. Condition 20, no cork screws or can openers of any kind or type shall be sold, furnished, or given away. Condition 21, wow. any, cup, any cups, glasses, or other receptacles commonly used for the consumption of alcoholic beverages shall not be sold. Condition 22, all ice shall be sold in quantities of no less than three pounds or from a beverage machine with a soft drink. Condition 23, no coin or slug operator or electrically electronically video or mechanical control game machines shall be permitted in the market. Condition 24, the business owner shall contact the 76, sorry, 77 division vice unit of the police department whenever any public nuisance or policing problems occur. Uh, condition 25, a video surveillance system shall be maintained on the interior and the exterior of the store. And finally, condition 26, the conditions of the subject action shall be provided to employees for their review within 30 days from the effective date of this grant, a statement signed by the employees stating that they reviewed and agreed to comply with the conditions shall be submitted to the Development Services Center of the Planning Department for inclusion in the file. I will uh, provide now the recommendation for item seven. The recommendation is uh, to deny the appeal filed uh, by the owner and the operator, the Chung Quan May Family Trust, doing business as Mr. Spirit Liquor, and thereby sustain the zoning administrator revocation and discontinuance of alcohol use for the property at 6816, 6818, 6820. 6822, 6824, 6826 Southwestern Avenue. And in addition, adopt the additional findings for condition number five and the additional 23 conditions in addition to the four conditions imposed by the zoning administrator as reflected in the letter just read into the record dated May 16, 2022, submitted by Council District 8. I will call the roll. Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Gilbert Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member John Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent four votes and it passes. Uh, Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to the zoning administrator and our detective and our uh, CDA team is who is, if nothing else, extremely thorough. Uh, it, it, thank it, you. Sure. In addition, uh, Councilman, if I may interrupt, I stated for the record uh, at the beginning of, of the meeting that I had read into the record uh, these additional uh, conditions that I would read into. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, that takes us to item number eight. Item eight, this is an appeal filed by Oak Choi. Uh, he's appealing the... the, the determination of the zoning administrator relative to the determination to continue to impose corrective conditions to mitigate land use impacts caused by the operation of Tom's Market located in CD8. All right, uh, we have a report uh, from our zoning administrator. Yes, good afternoon, Honorable Palm Chair and the council members. Um, I'm Jack Chow, Associate Zone Administrator with the City Planning Department. Item number eight, 
pertains to an appeal to the zone administrator's decision on plan approval three to impose meeting the payment conditions on Tom's Market, which formerly known as Tom's Liquor, located at 1355 West Florence Avenue in the 8th Council District. At the December 14, 2001 public hearing, the business operator requests that the city concede the future plan approval following based on the operator's improvement. The zone administrator agreed to the request, but the zone administrator also informed both the operator and his representative that additional operational conditions will be imposed so to bring the city determination on par with all the new conditional use determination relating to the alcohol sales. The operator and the representative agreed to the zone administrator's imposition of a condition in exchange of no future plan approval. On March 16, 2022, the zone administrator issued a determination modifying 10 conditions and add 15 new conditions for a total of 38 conditions for the business to the operation of uh, Tom's Market in order to mitigate an adverse impact caused by the subject business. The zone administrator imposed standard conditions seen in the problematic restaurant and liquor selling retail business. Condition includes require operator to attend LAPD meetings, uh, condition, uh, compliance to ABC regulations, no sales of a single can, bottles, and single cigarettes, uh, no alcohol sales advertisement, discourage criminal activity, not selling alcohol to overly intoxicated individual, monitoring premises and, and prostitutes and narcotic users and sales and sellers and monitor and discourage public drinking and maintain fencing and reverse city uh, the uh, nuisance of payment fee. On March 31st, 2022, the operator of Tom's Market filed an appeal challenging the entire plan approval three uh, decision of the zone administrator that includes all the corrective conditions and newly added conditions. The uh, owner written, uh, the, the owner's written justification of the appeal has been transferred to the uh, council file number 22-0443 for your consideration. Appellant claims that the uh, condition prohib prohibits the uh, operator from continuing to, uh, to provide the public convenience and necessity to uh, their customer, as well as the potential to the lawsuits due to racial profiling and discrimination. Conditions are not enforceable and that the uh, operator demonstrates substantial compliance with the corrective conditions and residents uh, are supportive of subject business. Uh, the zone administrator find that although the town's market has made some operational improvements, uh, it has not fully complied with the previous plan approval conditions, such as condition number six, uh, no one answers the complaint hotline or there is no lock on the site, and condition number seven, uh, no on-site security lock, Number 18, uh, condition 18, no stock training record for the employee. Um, uh, the area continued to suffer from public drinking and loitering. Uh, to fully relieve from the uh, future plan approval, the operator entering the gentleman's agreement with the city to accept additional conditions. This condition imposed on the property a standard operational condition for business such as Tom's Market and the nexus of a condition to where. Uh, uh, to uh, this condition, or, or also including the finding on the page 35 to 41 of the determination letter. Based on this information, uh, the zone administrator recommends the plan committee to deny the appeal and sustain the zone administrator's decision and maintain all conditions that the zone administrator has imposed in the determination to safeguard the community. The zone administrator also requests the plan committee members to consider and adopt two staff recommendations. Uh, first, on condition number 28, uh, to be modified that the operator shall maintain, uh, uh, sh sorry, uh, modify that the operator shall submit a copy of the determination to the state alcoholic beverage control. And second, the plan committee member uh, amend language to recommend the state ABC to prohibit Tom Market to sell single cans of a pre pack, four and six packs of beer, wine cooler, or malt liquor. Uh, the recommendation and the wording have been transmitted to the office of city clerk. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for any question that the plan member committee may have. Thank you. All right, uh, we have an appellant on this case.
Mr. Chair, the appellant has not called in. Uh, if there is uh, no appellant, I just want to double check uh, with, our, with our city attorney to make sure we can go to a, a vote on this item. Adrian Corsani, city attorney's office. Um, let me just, I'm going to confirm with the clerk to make sure that that was, they're good on their end. Um, Madam Clerk, is there anyone whose number matches that didn't get queued in or have you received any communications? I, I have not. This is Candy Rosales. I have not uh, received any communication from an appellant. Or if they haven't called in and they were given the um, information to do so, as I understand city planning did provide, then you you can proceed with the deliberation and vote. All right. Uh, well, I will uh, move that we deny this appeal. Uh, if there's a second, uh, Mr. Uh, Mejia, you can read the recommendations into the uh, record and call the roll. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Bloomfield. Roll. You're on mute, Mr. Mejia. My apologies. Uh, I will read the recommendations. To deny the appeal filed by Oak Choi, uh, represented by Alex Wood Genesis Consulting, thereby sustain the zoning administrator's determination to continue to impose corrective conditions that are necessary to mitigate land use impacts caused by the operation of Palms Market for the property located at 1355 West Florence Avenue and approve the modification to condition tw number 28 and a new recommendation is noted in a communication dated June 16th, 2022 from the planning department and uploaded to council file number 220443 as follow and as, and as read at the beginning of today's meeting. Condition 28, the operator shall submit this copy of this decision to the California State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control and a new recommendation that there shall not be any sale of single cans or, or bottles of beer, wine, coolers, or malt liquor from pre-packet six or four packs. The sale of individual cans or, or bottles of, of craft beer from 21 plus fluid ounce containers is permissible. And three, a plan approval is required in 12 months to be prepared by the city planning department and as stated at today's meeting by zoning administrator Jack Chang. I will call the roll. Council member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Gilbert Cedillo. Yes. Council member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council member John Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent. That's four months. Four votes and it carries, Mr. Chair. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, that takes us to item number nine. Item nine, this is an environmental impact report that the addendum and a report from the Planning Commission, which is inclusive of a general plan amendment resolution, a vesting zone and high district change ordinance and amendments to the convention and event center sign district and the convention and event center specific plan for the convention center expansion for the uh, project located in CD9. All right, uh, we have a report from Department of City Planning. Uh, hello, yes, good afternoon. Uh, Will Lamborn with City Planning staff. Uh, we have a very brief uh, presentation. So again, um, good afternoon, committee members. So before the Plum Committee today, our entitlements associated with the Convention Center Expansion and Modernization Project. Uh, the project involves a 700,000 square foot expansion of the Los Angeles Convention Center involving the construction of a new hall building spanning Pico Boulevard and other related improvements, including a comprehensive signage program. The requested approvals include the first addendum and joint analysis to the previously certified EIR, a city initiated general plan amendment, vesting zone change and height district change, and amendments to the specific plan and sign district that govern the convention center and the arena. These entitlements were considered and recommended for approval by the City Planning Commission in April of 2022. And planning staff recommends that the City Council um, and, and that the Plum Committee recommended the City Council to take the following action related to the environmental clearance, which I'll quickly read into the record. To find, based on the independent judgment of the decision maker, after consideration of the whole of the administrative record, 
that the project was assessed in the previously certified Convention and Event Center Project Environmental Impact Report, EIR case number ENB 2011 0585-EIR, certified October 2012, and pursuant to CEQA guidelines sections 15162 and 15164, and the addendum and joint analysis dated December 2021, that no major revisions to the EIR are required and no subsequent EIR or negative declaration is required for approval of the project. Staff further recommends approval of the project's requested general plan amendment, vesting zone change and height district change, and the specific plan amendments. Please note that staff has submitted a letter to Plum available on the council file with some minor technical corrections to the proposed signed district amendment, which Mr. Mejia read into the record earlier during the hearing this afternoon, and which staff recommends be incorporated by Plum and the council into their action. Uh, thank you, and we will be available for any questions. All right, uh, do we have uh, any comments from Council District 9? All right, I see uh, Mr. Don Lu on the line. Uh, do you wanna have anything to share with us regarding this item? Uh, thank you, Don Lu, Executive Director of the City Tourism Department. Brief comments, uh, uh, and I appreciate it. As you know, we've been working with our partners at AEG and the Plenary Group. Uh, for several years on the expansion and modernization of the Convention Center. The Convention Center is 50 years old and is in desperate need of upgrades and the new expansion will also allow us to compete with newer and larger Convention Centers in San Francisco, Anaheim and San Diego and Convention Centers across the country. We're excited about taking this important step today towards starting this long-awaited and desperately needed project. I'm pleased to uh, 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 share the microphone, if you will, uh, with our partners at AEG if they have anything to share uh, and their representatives. Um, and I'm happy to answer que any questions you might have. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so if there's uh, nothing further from Council District 9, uh, any questions or comments from members of the committee? Uh, if not, I'll move that we uh, approve this uh, general plan amendment uh, with recommendations. Uh, if there's a second, uh, Mr. Mejia. Second. second. Seconded by Mr. Lee. If we can um, read the recommendations and call the roll, thank you. Uh, yes, the recommendation to approve the general plan amendment resolution, the vesting zone and height district change ordinance. The sequel findings are stated on the record at today's meeting by city planner William Lambert and request the city attorney to prepare and present two ordinances to amend the Convention and Event Center Sign District and the Convention and Event Center Specific Plan. In addition, to adopt the technical modification as stated on the record, again by City Planner William Lambert, dated June 16, 2022, and uploaded to Council File 220536. And in addition, to adopt the recommendations in a letter dated June 21, 2022 uploaded to the council file by Council District 9, current D. Price Jr., and as read into the record at the beginning of the meeting by the planner for CD9, Cheryl Correa. I will call the roll. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Gilbert Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member John Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez is absent. That's four members and it carries, Mr. Chair. Excellent. That takes us to item uh, number 10. Item 10, this is a categorical exemption from CEQA and a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission relative to the inclusion of the Bothwell Ranch located at 5300 North Oakdale Avenue in CD3 as a historic cultural monument. All right, uh, we have a report from the Department of City Planning in the person of uh, Ms. Melissa Jones. Yes, good afternoon, uh, chair, members of the committee. I'm Melissa Jones with City Planning's Office of Historic Resources. Before you today is the recommendation from the Culture Heritage Commission to designate Bothwell Ranch, a 13-acre citrus orchard located on North Oakdale Avenue in Tarzana as an historic culture monument. This nomination was initiated by Councilmember Blumenfield in the third council district. The Cultural Heritage Commission found that the Bothell Ranch exemplifies significant contributions to the broad cultural, economic, 
or social history of the nation, state, city, or community as one of the last remaining commercial citrus groves in the San Fernando Valley, representing a significant remnant of the region's agricultural roots and a once integral element of the local economy. The commission also found that the properties associated with the lives of historic personages important to national, state, city, or local history as the longtime home of Lindley Bothwell, a prominent University of Southern California cheerleading coach and prosperous orange grower. This concludes my report. Lambert, Lambert Giesinger from our office and I are available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as this item is in uh, Council District 3, I'll ask Mr. Blumenfeld to lead us in discussion. Great, thank you. Um, so in 2019, I put forward a motion to initiate the consideration of Bothwell Ranch as a historic cultural monument. This is an orange grove. Uh, I was trying to preserve the entire ranch because it is a very special place in the West San Fernando Valley. It is literally the last remaining orange grove in the city and the, the local community understandably is very attached to having it remain as a grove. It is however private property and the owners have a right to develop it. My goal all along has been to preserve some or all of the land. For the past three years we've tried a number of different avenues to achieve this. Uh, community members got together, formed a nonprofit to raise money to, to try to buy the land. Unfortunately, the land costs are tens of millions. Very little money was actually raised. There was some hope at one point the state might buy the land. That didn't happen. There was even a financing mechanism proposed. While it seemed promising, there wasn't a revenue model that, that could make it pan out. However, the good news is that we've come up with a way to save the history and a portion of this land working closely with the owners, with the developer who's purchasing the land from the developer, with the Mountains Recreation Conservation Authority, the MRCA, we came up with a plan to preserve a third of the site via a donation to the MRCA. The MRCA, uh, as, as you all probably know, is the joint powers of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and is the premier land preservation organization in the region. And what this means is that rather than attempting to go the risky and uncertain route of attempting to preserve this property via designation, we will be actually able to preserve it through the ironclad method of preservation through donation. Consequently, I'm now asking that we deny my original motion to preserve the land through designation. This is also important because there's an aerial photographic evidence that shows that the entire grove was replanted between 1980 and 85, which is clearly after the, the period of significance ended for citrus groves. That period ended in 1945. In other words, while the site certainly has historic significance, uh, when you really start looking at it, it doesn't really qualify for historic monument designation. My staff has submitted a report by a reputable historic consultant to the council file with photos and further analysis of why this site should not be designated. But since we have an MOU to achieve preservation by donation, and based on the findings and evidence I have submitted to the record, we don't need to try to fit a square peg in a round hole and preserve this by designation. So colleagues, I ask that we deny the Cultural Heritage Commission's recommendation to declare Bothwell Ranch a historic cultural monument. And also, I just want you to know I've been working closely with the community on this issue and believe that this, this solution is not only in the best interest of the community, but it is really the desire of the community uh, as it will, it will, in fact, result in, in preservation of a key part of this land. So again, colleagues, I ask for your no vote on this uh, and to deny the um, historical stat, uh, the commission's recommendation to declare it a historical monument. All right, uh, I will second. So, so you're asking us to vote yes on the denial or no on the whole thing? Uh, I'm asking you to vote no uh, because what's before us is, is a recommendation to designate. Got it, okay. So uh, I've seconded uh, Mr. Blumenfield's motion if there's no further discussion. Can you read the uh, recommendations to, to uh, disapprove into the record, Mr. Mejia? Yes, uh, the recommendation being to disapprove the inclusion of Bothwell Ranch located at 5300 North Oakdale Avenue in the list of historic cultural monuments and as denoted in a letter dated June 20, 
1, 2022, by Council District 3, which has been uploaded to Council File 190782 and as stated on the record at today's meeting by the Councilman of the District. I will call the roll. Councilmember Marquise Harris-Dawson. No. Is that no, Councilman? Yes, it's no. Okay, no. Councilmember Cedillo. Again, Councilman Cedillo. No. Okay. Councilman Blumenfield. Blumenfield, no. Okay. So no meaning to disapprove the inclusion, right? Just to be clear. Yes. The recommendation is to disapprove the inclusion. Correct. Okay, so we're not approving the inclusion. We are not approving the recommendation from the Historic Cultural Heritage Commission. Yeah, we are voting no on that recommendation. Gotcha. Councilmember Lee. No. And Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent, so those are four votes to disapprove. Thank you. To disapprove, which will result in actual preservation. Correct. Thank you, Councilman. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Blumenfield. Hopefully that works out. There is one, Bob. Thanks a lot for that. That takes us to item number 11. Item 11, categorical exemption from CEQA and the related findings. In a report from the Planning Commission and an appeal filed by the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters relative to the approval of environmental clearance, a categorical exemption from CEQA for a new mixed-use building with 331 dwelling units, including 37 dwelling units set aside for very low-income households, properties situated in CD14. All right. We have a report from the Department of City Planning. Yes, sorry. Good afternoon, committee members. Oliver Nepern with the Department of Planning. The project that you have before you is an appeal of a new 331-unit mixed-use development with 37 units set aside for very low-income households and approximately 6,350 square feet of ground floor commercial space located at 121 West 3rd Street and 244 to 252 South Spring Street. This project, which includes a density bonus and site plan review, was considered by and approved by the City Planning Commission on January 13, 2022. CBC determined that the project met the requirements for the Class 32 categorical exemption and was therefore exempt from CEQA. The appeal raises issues related to local hiring practices, the project's transportation assessment, project design features, regulatory compliance measures, GHG emissions, and state density bonus law. Those points related to the project's environmental clearance have been responded to in depth by the project's environmental consultant and are included in the record. With regards to local hiring practices, this is not a land use matter and therefore not relevant to the project's approval. Staff recommends that you deny the appeal and thereby sustain the action of the City Planning Commission and approve the project. Thank you so much. We have an appellant on the line. Hello, Chairman, Honorable Commissioners. My name is Mitchell Tai. I'm an attorney appearing here on behalf of the Appellant Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters members live, work, and recreate in the vicinity of the project and will be impacted by the environmental impacts of the project. Appellants would like to see the developer make a commitment not only to affordable housing but supporting good local jobs. First, 
I would like to request that the City Council continue this item as City staff has not made the project's transportation assessment available to the public for review. Secondly, we would like to request that the Commission, if it were opt not to continue this item, to grant the appeal as the project will be approved in violation of the California Environmental Quality Act and the State Planning and Zoning Law. Class, um, the Class 32 CEQA exemption, which City staff notes, that um, the city is seeking to exempt the project under from CEQA environmental review can only be applied towards projects that are consistent with the city's general plan and zoning designation, as well as only if the project would not result in significant traffic, noise, air quality, and or water quality impact. The city is not the project is not consistent with the city's general plan and zoning designations as exceeds the allowable floor area ratio for the project. In addition, the project fails to provide a sufficient number of affordable units to receive the, the, the significant number, excessive number of um, bonus concessions and off-menu concessions that is receiving from the city pursuant to the state potency bonus law. Finally, the project fails to provide substantial evidence to support its findings that the project would not result in significant environmental impact. Thank you. That concludes my comments. All right, uh, we have an applicant on the line. Dana Sales, please press star six to unmute yourself. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, for the record, Dana Sales on behalf of the applicant in this matter. Um, I'm also here today if you have any technical questions for our legal counsel, Claire Bernowski from Rand Pastor and Nelson. Um, on behalf of the applicant, we implore that you recommend denial of this appeal and uphold the determination of the Planning Commission. Uh, we submitted a robust response on this appeal, um, which is attached to your agenda, and we can answer any of those questions. Um, as staff said, this was heard by the Planning Commission earlier this year and approved. The project has wide support from the downtown local community, um, downtown neighborhood council. We have vetted all issues with neighbors, and we do have a robust local hire program already in place for the project. Um, also, as a point of information, the morning of the City Planning Commission, the appellant submitted a 400-page appeal on the project as a last-minute attempt. Um, to try and stop the project in complete violation of the city's day of submission procedures. They did the same thing today, submitting over 200 pages at 1122, less than three hours before the hearing, giving us, um, the public, and you no time to actually consider anything in the appeal. This is in complete violation of any city procedures that you hold all of us as applicants to. Um, and furthermore, uh, we request that any, any submittal from the applicant that was made today be disregarded as consideration for today. The appeal that was actually filed was riddled with errors related to project description, uh, the wrong entitlements, referred to the CEQA clearance as an EIR, not a class 32 exemption. There's a very robust traffic study in the, um, in the file, um, and all of the CEQA issues have been thoroughly vetted by staff and responded to on multiple occasions at this point in time as a result of um, the comments that were submitted before the hearing. Um, uh, there's been no substantial evidence in the record to uh, make any findings to deny the density bonus or the site plan review or the categorical, categorical exemption for the project. Um, any appeal points bring up no new issues that haven't been thoroughly vetted by staff or by the CEQA consultant. The appeal has only delayed a project bringing new housing to 37 affordable units to the downtown community directly across the street from the 3rd and Spring Street metro station, which is an ideal location for transit proximate housing within the downtown core. Um, after reviewing, uh, you know, quickly the appeal documentation from today, we can confirm that the approvals the exemption on the project are complete, adequate, and in full compliance with the municipal code, the general plan, CEQA, and state density bonus law. We meet all of the criteria, criteria for the exemption and the entitlements that have been granted by the Planning Commission. Um, the project is consistent with all applicable plans and policies. We have no value as habitat or any protected species. There's been no significant impacts on traffic. We are literally across the street from the Third and Spring Street station in downtown. Uh, we have technical studies in the record that demonstrate there's no impact on traffic, air quality, noise, 
water quality. Thank you. That's um, your time. Project will be adequately served by public services. We ask you to please deny this appeal today. Thank you. All right. Um, we have uh, Ms. Howard from Council District 14. Good afternoon, Council Members. Emma Howard, Director of Planning, Council District 14. Council Member Damion here to speak on the project. Uh, we just wanted to note that our office does not see any notations in the file that indicate that the CPC and the planning staff erred in their determination. And for that record, reason we also support the planning department recommendation of approving the project and denying the appeal. Thank you. All right, uh, so I'll move uh, with the recommendation of Council District 14 that we deny the appeal with specific instructions. If there's a second. Second, second by Mr. Cedillo. Uh, Mr. Mejia, can you uh, read the instructions and call the roll? Uh, yes, the recommendation is to deny the appeal filed by the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters uh, Mitchell Sai is a representative and thereby sustained the planning commission's approval of the environmental clearance and categorical exemption from CEQA for the construction of a new mixed use building with 331 dwelling units, inclusive of 37 dwelling units set aside for very low income households, 11% of the total units for the property located at 121 3rd Street and 252 South Spring Street. I will call the roll. Council member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Gilbert Seguillo. Yes. Council member Bob Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council member John Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Malika Rodriguez uh, is absent. That's four votes and it carries, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. I believe we have a clarification or input from the city attorney. Yeah, Adrian uh, Persani, city attorney's office. So it appears that there was some confusion on the Boswell Ranch, uh, Boswell Ranch uh, item. So. Just for purposes of clarifying the record, um, I'd uh, suggest that the chair reopen the item and that the committee members vote on the item agendized, which is the recommendation to include the, to the property as a monument um, per the CHC. So if you don't want to include it, you would vote no. Isn't that what we did? Well, it's unclear what question was actually called. So that's why we're going to call. If we reopen it, it would be to call that question clearly, right. and then or, or affirm. I mean, it's all the same thing. We want to disapprove the inclusion of the Bothwell Ranch. Correct. So, so for purposes of to vote, is vote yeah. yes on the disapproval, then no on the approval. Because of the agenda and because of the way that the um, matter will be agendized at council, it'll be clearer to vote on the way that the agenda is is written, um, and and based and so on the recommendation coming from the city, the Cultural Heritage Commission. That's what I thought we did, but so you're, we're, we're going to ask for a no vote on. Correct. Yes, that it, that is clearly what the intent was. There's some question as to what the question called was. So again, this is just my suggestion based on the um, input I'm getting, I'm getting from staff. Fine with me, Mr. Chair, to clarify. That's Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll uh, um, uh, move that we reconsider. Is that what we're doing? All right, I'll move to reconsider. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bloomingfield, uh, without objection. Um, and then uh, I guess, Mr. Mejia, if you can read into the record what we're voting on, uh, and then I will ask for discussion to hear from Mr. Bloomingfield, and then uh, we'll, we'll call the question. Yes, so the recommendation is to disapprove the inclusion of Bothwell Ranch located at 5300 North Oakdale Avenue in the list of historic cultural monuments as yeah. recommended by... No, I think that's where we went wrong last time, Roberto, sorry. The recommendation from the Cultural Heritage Com Commission is to include the monument. Right, and we're voting no on, on that. Correct. No on the thought. inclusion. No on the inclusion, if that is the intent. Yes. What what I, thought, so, I thought we already did, but we can do it again to be clear. So just to be clear again, so no on the inclusion of Bothwell Ranch located at 5300 North Oakdale Avenue in the list of historic cultural monuments as recommended by the councilman of the district and as noted in a letter uh, submitted to the council file 
dated June 21st, 2022. I will call the roll. Council Member Harris Dawson. No. Council Member Cedillo. No. Council Member Blumenfield. No. Council Member Lee. Again, Council Member Lee. Council Member Lee is absent for a few minutes. Okay, so, and Councilwoman Rodriguez absent. That's three votes and it carries. No as to the inclusion, to reiterate. All right, uh, Madam City Attorney, we, we uh, good on this? I think the intent of the committee to not include the property as a designated monument is clear. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mejia, that takes us to item number 12. Uh, yes, uh, and Councilman, for the record, I need to make a uh, correction to item seven uh, that previously was deliberated. Uh, I stated earlier uh, for item number seven that there were an additional 23 conditions as noted in the CD8 May 16th letter. It should have been to state for the record 22 additional conditions and they are number five through 26. That is the sole correction to that item. I can ask for a, a vote in your indulgence again for item number seven, which is uh, council file 220188. Council right. member Harris Dawson. Uh, yes. Council member Cedillo. Yes. Council member Blumenfield. Aye. And Council Member Lee is absent, and Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent, as duly noted, uh, for item seven, the 22 conditions. Uh, item 12, uh, a sustainable project exemption and related CEQA findings, the mitigation, monitoring, and reporting program, and a report from city planning for the construction of a mixed use residential building with 166 residential units. 24 units set aside for very low income households. The property is located in CD34. All right, uh, we have a, a report from uh, city planning. Uh, yes, we do. Again, um, good afternoon, uh, committee members, Oliver Neppern with the Department of Planning. Uh, the project that you have before you is a sustainable community project exemption for a new 166 unit mixed use development with 13,000 square feet of commercial space and 24 units reserved for very low income households. Located at 1911 to 1931 West Sunset Boulevard and 1911 to uh, 2018 West Reservoir Street. I wanted to take a moment to address the historic status of the subject property. Um, the analysis within the Skippy considered the historic status of the site and acknowledges that there are differing opinions from experts with regards to the presence of any historic resource on site. Nevertheless, while all experts agree that the site was potentially eligible for listing on local register, importantly, not state or federal listing, the ultimate arbiter of what is historic and important to the city of Los Angeles is the city council. When the site was nominated to be a historic cultural monument, the city council determined that the only existing historic resources on site were limited to the bar top and two signs. Those resources will be preserved and incorporated into the project and therefore no significant adverse effect would occur to any historic resource. Additionally, council is not bound by the designation in determining CEQA impacts and it may consider any of the expert opinions it finds credible in the determination of what is or what is not a historic resource and what is or what is not a CEQA impact to a historic resource. Staff rec staff's recommendation is based on a historic resource assessment, which was prepared by a qualified expert. As such, the proposed project meets all of the criteria to qualify as a skippy, and staff recommends that you approve the sustainable communities project exemption for the proposed project. All right, um, I believe we have one person uh, who claims to have been overlooked during public comment. Uh, so I want to give them an opportunity to speak at this time. Let's 
She's a, a representative from Silver Lake Heritage. Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. I need a clerk can assist. My understanding is yes, it's a representative from Silver Lake uh, Heritage. Um, Mr. Rosales, do you have the person's number? No, I do not have her, her phone number. Is there a way to determine who's, which caller? No, she never responded back. I asked her if she, if she, um, and she never responded. All right, uh, so we'll hear from Mr. Bullock. Uh, and if you are um, in range, now is the time to uh, say so uh, for our Silver Lake Heritage Rep. Mr. Bullock. Good afternoon. My name is Craig Bullock. I'm with Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell's office. The council member is supportive of the Department of City Planning's recommendation regarding this item. He concurs that the project qualifies as a transit priority project and should be declared a sustainable communities project, making it exempt from CEQA. We would also like to convey our appreciation to the Department of City Planning, who's worked very diligently on this project. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, one more time, uh, Mr. Rosales or Mr. Johnson, we have that caller on. If not, um, I'm recommending that we approve it, uh, uh, approve the clearance uh, with specific instructions that will be read uh, by Mr. Mejia once we have a second. The second on approving second. the environments. Thank you, Mr. Bloomingfield. Uh, Mr. Mejia, if you can uh, read the instructions into the record and call the roll. Uh, yes, to approve the environmental clearance and sustainable communities project exemption, Skippy, the findings contained in the planning department report dated March 11, 2022. In as much as a proposed project is a transit priority project and thereby exempt from CEQA, pursuant to public resources code section 21155.1 and the associated uh, findings therein. I will call, oh, and in addition, as stated on the record by the city planner, Oliver Netburn, and by CD13, Craig Bullock. I will call the roll. Council member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Sevilla. Yes. Council member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council member Lee's absent and council member Rodriguez absent three votes and it carries Mr. Chair. All right, that takes us uh, to item number 13. Item 13, this is a negative declaration of the related environmental findings and report from the planning commission and appeal by supporters of Alliance for Environmental Responsibility relative to the approval of the conditional use permit and the site plan review for the construction of a new six story mixed use building with 108 residential units, 13 of which are for very low income units for a period of 55 years situated in CD5. All right, uh, we have a report from uh, Department of City Planning. Yes, hi, good afternoon, honorable council members. My name is Moore Song, planning staff with LA City Planning. Uh, this case before you right now, item number 13, this is council file 21-1247. And again, this is for an appeal of the City Planning Commission's approval of a new six-story, 72-foot-high mixed-use building with 108 residential units above approximately 3,250 square feet of commercial space on the ground floor. Uh, this project was approved utilizing state density bonus law and incentives, and thus will provide 13 restricted affordable units, as stated. Uh, the project was also granted a conditional use and a site plan review, and specifically those two are um, those two entitlements are what's being appealed in front of you. Uh, this project again was unanimously approved by the City Planning Commission on September 9th, 2021. The appellant is a law firm on behalf of the Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, or SAFER. Uh, the appeal contends that the project did not sufficiently analyze um, all of the project's potential environmental impacts. Um, as the appeal points are all very technical in nature, the applicant's representative has prepared a comprehensive response to every appeal point raised. Uh, that should be part of the council file in front of you. Uh, and again, while I'm certainly available to answer any specific questions that anyone might have, planning has reviewed and agrees with the response to comments document and uh, finds no substantial merit to the appellant's claims. 
In addition, the City Planning Commission and City Planning believe that this project will be beneficial and will provide much needed housing for the community and therefore recommends a denial of the appeal before you. Again, I am available to answer any questions you may have and thank you all so much for your time. All right, uh, thank you so much. Do we have an appellant on the line? Amalia Fuentes, please press star six to unmute yourself. Thank you. My name is Amalia Boli Fuentes. I'm with the law firm Lozo Drury, representing the Appellant Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, or SAFER. SAFER is requesting that the Planning and Land Use Management Committee grant its appeal because of deficiencies with the negative declaration for the 9500 Pico project. SAFER submitted comments to the Planning Commission and reiterates the issues identified with the ND regarding potential air quality issues. Environmental consulting firm Soil Water Air Protection Enterprise, or SAFE, reviewed the city's response to SAFER's previously submitted comments and found that the response did not adequately address the issues raised by SAFE. Specifically, SAFE found that the negative declaration still had unsubstantiated changes to individual construction phase length and incorrect application of area-related operational mitigation measures. And further, SAFE prepared an updated air quality emissions model which found that nitrous oxide emissions would exceed applicable South Coast Air Quality Management District thresholds. As for indoor air quality impacts, industrial hygienist Francis Offerman reviewed the city's response to comments and found that several of the issues he raised had been misstated by the city. Mr. Offerman reiterates that the project may cause substantial indoor air quality impacts from off-gassing of formaldehyde. For these reasons, SAFER respectfully requests that the committee grant the appeal so that these concerns can be addressed in an EIR or at least an MND prior to further consideration of the project. Thank you. All right, uh, do we have an applicant on the line? Mr. Goldsmith. Uh, good afternoon, honorable committee members. My name is Dale Goldsmith. I'm a partner with the law firm of Armbruster Goldsmith and Delbach, representing the applicant CPG 9500 West Pico LLC. First, I'd like to commend staff at a very thorough staff report, which shows that the appeal is without merit. I also object to the 174 page letter submitted by appellants, which was posted only eight minutes before the start of this hearing. This sort of sandbagging is unfair to the city, the public, and the applicant. Therefore, I respectfully request that you reject this letter as untimely and inconsistent with the city's submittal policies. Due to the limited time, I was only able to give the letter a quick review, but I will provide my preliminary responses. First, appellants nitpicked the air quality modeling, asserting that the project air quality model used unsubstantiated inputs. The staff appeal response and expert report from Parker Environmental thoroughly refutes this assertion. Appellant's last-minute letter disagrees with these responses and proposes different assumptions, but provides no credible evidence that the air quality modeling's assumptions are inaccurate or that appellant's assumptions are better. Appellant has also submitted their own air modeling. However, it is based on incorrect and inaccurate assumptions and is therefore not credible. Appellants also ask that mitigation measures be imposed to reduce air quality impacts. However, as such impacts are less than significant, no mitigation is warranted. Appellants also claim that formaldehyde in the building materials was a result in significant excess cancer impacts to future residents and employees. As set forth in Parker and Mike Environmental's expert appeal response, appellants' analysis is deeply flawed and substantially overstates the temperature impacts from formaldehyde. As Parker points out, appellants' analysis wrongfully assumes that formaldehyde daily emissions from construction materials would be constant over 70 years. In fact, they will decline over time. Appellants also assume that residents would live in their units for 70 consecutive years and that employees would work at the project site eight hours a day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, for 45 years. Appellants' last-minute letter does not dispute any of this, but claims that their analysis is nonetheless correct. This is simply not credible. Therefore, we respectfully request that you deny the appeal. I and the rest of the development team are available for any questions. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we have our favorite uh, representative from uh, District 5 at this time. Thank you so much, Chair Harris Dawson. I'm Dylan Satig, Senior Planning Deputy uh, for Council Member Koretz. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to provide comments on this today. Uh, and thank you, staff, for the presentation as well. Uh, Council Member Koretz, 
recommends that the committee deny the appeal based on the appeal response uh, provided by planning staff. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, if there's no other discussion on this item, uh, Mr. Mejia, I'm moving that we deny the appeal. Uh, the recommendation of Council District Second. 5. Seconded by Mr. Cedillo. If you could read the instructions into the uh, record and call Yes. Me. Yes, to deny the appeal filed by Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility and thereby sustain the Planning Commission's approval of the conditional use permit and site plan review for the construction of a new six story mixed use building with 108 residential units, 13 very low income units, reserved for a period of 55 years and 134 parking spaces for the property located at 9500 through 9530 West Pico Boulevard. And as stated on the record at today's meeting by the city planner, Mark Song, and Vice Council District 5, Dylan Sated. I will call the roll. Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Blumenfield. Aye. Council Member Lee's absent, Councilwoman Rodriguez absence. Uh, that's three votes and it carries, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number 14. Item 14, this is a report from the Central Area Planning Commission and two appeals filed by Park La Brea Impacted Residence Group and two supporters of the Alliance for Environmental Responsibility relative to the approval of the third and Fairfax mixed use project EIR for the construction of a new mixed use development which includes 331 multifamily dwelling units situated in CD5. All right, uh, we have a report from city planning on this. Um, good afternoon, yes, uh, Will Lamborn from city planning. Um, so uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here. So before Plum today are two CEQA appeals, um, as Mr. Mejia stated on the environmental impact report, prepared for the third and Fairfax mixed use project. Uh, this project would involve the construction and operation of a new mixed use development within the eastern portion of the existing town and country shopping center which is located at the intersection of third street and fairfax avenue the proposed development activities would be limited to the eastern portion of the center or what's referred to as the development site in the eir and would include the demolition of existing retail uses and the construction of a mid-rise eight-story mixed-use structure with 331 multifamily dwelling units and retail uses the western portion of the site, currently occupied by a Whole Foods grocery store, would remain and it's not proposed to be demolished or redeveloped as part of the project. Uh, it's important to note that the matter before Plum today is solely the CEQA appeals. Um, the project's waiver of dedication and improvements entitlement and site plan review entitlement and appeals have already been administratively exhausted at the director and area planning commission levels respectively. These entitlements are not before Plum for its consideration and any appeal points relative to these finalized land use approvals are not relevant and are not before Plum today. Regarding the two sequel appeals, staff has submitted a letter to the council file dated June 15th with in-depth responses to the appeal points raised as well as expert environmental technical memos relative to indoor air quality and, and uh, construction noise. Since preparation of the June 15th report, staff has received some additional correspondence from one appellant and from members of the public uh, that I'd like to very briefly address. Um, first, staff has received correspondence uh, questioning the validity of today's hearing due to the inclusion of the name of one individual in the hearing notice in association with the name of the appellant organization, Park La Brea Impacted Residence Group. In originally filing their CEQA appeal, uh, this appellant submitted an appeal form listing the name of the organization and their address. Notice was in fact sent to the address and to the organization named in the appeal application. That an, appeal, that an additional name was included in the notice does not change the fact that the appellant did indeed, did indeed receive adequate notice and that no further notice is required. It's been further argued by members of the public that, public that the hearing should be postponed because no on-site posting of the hearing notice occurred. However, pursuant to LEMC 11513, there is no on-site posting requirement for the matter before Plum today. Notice was correctly provided and no on-site posting is required. Lastly, some correspondence was received suggesting uh, that the timing of existing conditions traffic counts in the EIR was incorrect. However, traffic counts were taken during peak hours in accordance with LADOT methodologies and an additional ambient growth factor was applied on top of these counts. The counts are in fact conservative and supported by evidence and approved by LADOT. 
And further, to the extent that the commenter's points on this concern are related to traffic congestion, vehicle delay in and of itself is no longer an environmental impact report as a matter of law pursuant to SB 743. Um, the appellant has stated that the EIR failed to analyze the potential future bike lane called for in the mobility plan on 3rd Street. However, installation of the bike lane in this specific location is subject to funding and priorities that may be established by LADOT and may or may not occur in a time frame that could be affected by the project and may or may not be installed at all in the future. In any event, nothing the project would do would preclude the potential installation of such a bike lane. And in fact, the project even removes an existing driveway on 3rd Street that would remove an existing potential conflict point between pedestrians, bicyclists, and cars, should such a lane be implemented in the future. LADOT reviewed the site plan and found it adequate, and again, to the extent that these concerns are due to traffic congestion resulting from a bike lane that is no longer a CEQA impact, as prior noted. I also would like to mention that there were two brief statements in public comment today um, regarding the appeal and points related to public safety. Um, and as described in detail in the appeal staff report available in the council file, the EIR's analysis of safety related issues and transportation hazards is adequate and supported by substantial evidence and related impacts would be less than significant. So in conclusion, uh, staff recommends that the council uh, deny both CEQA appeals, certify the environmental impact report, adopt the mitigation monitoring program and the related findings. The staff will be available for any questions. Thank you. All right, uh, we have uh, two appellants uh, and an applicant. Uh, first appellant is uh, Ms. Fuentes. Thank you. My name is Molly Boli Fuentes, again, representing Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility on this appeal as well. We are requesting that the committee grant this appeal because of deficiencies in the EIR for the third and Fairfax project. We previously submitted comments to the Planning Commission and we reiterate the issues identified with the EIR, which have to do specifically with three problem areas, energy impacts, noise impacts, and indoor air quality impacts. Regarding energy, a few months ago in a case called Lake to Save Lake Tahoe, the Court of Appeal held that an EIR must address whether any renewable energy features can be incorporated into a project and that failure to do so is a procedural violation of CEQA. Here, the EIR analyzed the project's energy <coughs> impacts by evaluating consistency with plans and policies um, related to Title 24 requirements and the Cal Green Code, but the EIR contains no discussion of how renewables can be incorporated into the project. Primary concerns for noise impacts are the adjacent Hancock Park Elementary School and the La Brea Apartments. The EIR measured the distance of the school and apartments from the center of the site but there will be construction and demolition much closer than just the center of the site. And lastly, the EIR contains no discussion of indoor air quality impacts, specifically impacts of formaldehyde. Safer's indoor air quality analysis expert concluded that formaldehyde off-gassing would expose future residents of the project to an increased cancer risk of 121 million and future employees of the commercial parts of the project to a cancer risk of 17.7 in 1 million, which both exceed the Air District's significant threshold. Paper respectfully requests that the com committee grant the appeals so that these concerns can be addressed in a revised EIR prior to further consideration of the project. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, our next appellant, uh, Ms. Gallen, or Galen, pardon me. Ms. Gallon, please press star six to unmute yourself. Ms. Gallon, please press star six to unmute yourself. I believe the appellant may be having some technical difficulties, Mr. Chair. We'll move ahead with our applicant uh, and get advice from uh, our city attorney after that. Jim Pugh, please press star six to unmute yourself. 
Hello, this is Jim Chu from Shepherd Mullen Law Firm, representing the applicant for the Third and Fairfax project. Can you hear me, honorable council members? We, we can hear you fine. Great, thank you. Um, again, Jim Pugh from Shepherd Mullen. We're requesting that the Plum Committee deny both appeals that are before you. And as staff pointed out, the narrow issue for action is certification of the EIR. All prior project approvals and entitlements have been approved by the lower bodies, including the Department of Planning through the Director and the Area Planning Commission. Um, regarding a few technical points, we submitted letters that responded to all of the issues raised by the appellants, um, both in a June 13th letter in response to the Park La Brea appeal and the June 17th letter from the SAFER appeal. Um, those responses clearly demonstrate that the appellant's claims do not have technical or legal merit, and we would hope that the Plum Committee would deny the appeals accordingly. I'd like to point out three other points. Um, one is procedure, two is the appellant, and three is characteristics of the project. On procedure, just a reminder, the Plum Committee is certifying the EIR today and upholding the prior certifications by APC and planning. So the only way to uh, approve the appeals would be find that your lower bodies erred and abused their discretion, which they did not. Um, point number two on the appellants, it's really a tale of two stories. For Park La Brea, uh, that appellant has been involved in the process for over four years. Um, the applicant worked collectively with them and included numerous modifications to the project uh, to improve it according to the appellant's desires. On the other side of the coin, SAFER has not been involved with the public outreach whatsoever and has shot from the side uh, as this group typically does. So we would like you to recognize those two lenses. On the project itself, it's 331 apartments that are essentially permitted on the site exactly as the zoning and land use uh, provisions of the city's plans apply, and so we would ask that you approve it um, as it is proposed. And one note on safety, which was brought up by a few of the opponents. The project includes improved sidewalks, and includes a new pocket park, new shade trees, new lighting, new pedestrian passageways, underground parking in place of surface parking in the current condition. It replaces a vacant structure it includes new crosswalks and a variety of other things. All of those things improve public safety, do not exacerbate existing safety or hazard conditions. So to wrap up, um, we would ask that you deny both appeals and support the staff's recommendation to certify the EIR. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh City Attorney, uh, do you have a recommendation for what we should do about Ms. Galen, Gallen? My understanding uh, from staff is that she's still on the line, so if we could give her another opportunity to unmute herself and make her statement now. Okay. Good afternoon, honorable committee members. My name is Barbara Gallen. I've been a member of Park La Brea Impacted Residence Group since 2018. I hope you've read our appeal. I will use this time to make sure you know a very important statistic the EIR should have told you but didn't. Nine pedestrian casualties, two of them fatal, on this project perimeter in the three years since the EIR process began. Per LAPD traffic, nine pedestrian casualties in 36 months, two dead on the scene, along Fairfax and 3rd Street, abutting the shopping center being redeveloped. How could it be that an EIR didn't mention this high rate of injury and death on its own perimeter when activating pedestrian access to the project is asserted by the EIR? How could it be the EIR provided no pedestrian studies or consideration for how more than doubling the density could exacerbate that hazard? Nine pedestrians seriously injured or killed in 36 months 
on this shopping center's perimeter. Applicant agrees to a, quote, voluntary condition to fund two crosswalks, but there's no required timetable or certainly or, or certainty it will get done. One of the illegal left turns out of the shopping center, one of which kills an 85-year-old man, or the hazardous sidewalks that represent hazardous design features of a project that touts its mission of activating the pedestrian community. Wheelchairs can't even get by some stretches. After three years of our asking the city to address this shopping center's casualty-prone perimeter, the city has approved an EIR that doesn't even mention nine pedestrian casualties, two of them fatal in 36, in 36 months on this project's perimeter. My son went to Hancock Park School, and I know the school needs some improvements. And it's wonderful the School Booster Club could negotiate a $3.5 million benefits package to secure its endorsement for the project. But the hazardous perimeter is not addressed by the school's multi-million dollar benefits package. Council Member Correct called for an investigation into why Vision Zero has failed. And this project right here can be a sort of ground zero now that you know the statistics. Nine casualties, two of them fatal, in 36 months on this project's perimeter. Grant our appeal and require applicants to study and mitigate the pedestrian hazards, co collisions, injuries, and deaths before their project begins. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, now we'll hear from Council District 5. Great. Uh, good afternoon. Dylan Satig, Senior Planning Deputy for Councilmember Goretz. Uh, thank you to the planning staff for putting in the extra hours and being responsive to our office's uh, comments and concerns related to this project and for the presentation. Uh, there's been a very lengthy public engagement process related to this project, and a community working group was established by the applicant and the council office, which at the time was Council District 4. Uh, Councilmember Koretz wants to acknowledge the long community engagement process and thank all of the community participants. The environmental impact report was a voluntary process that the applicant took on to give real credence to community concerns. The applicant has been very responsive to these concerns, especially those raised by the adjacent school. Uh, we've advocated for the inclusion of the promised crosswalks at 3rd Street and Fairfax at Blackburn, uh, subject to feasibility and approval by LADOT. Additionally, having the gated parking will help to reduce jaywalking across 3rd Street. Councilmember Koretz recommends that the committee deny the CEQA appeal uh, based on the appeal response provided by planning staff. Our office is in full support of this project. Now, this project will bring many benefits to the community and as addressed by planning staff, the appeal points raised are of no merit. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, if there's no discussion on this item, uh, I'll move that we deny the appeal. There's a second. Second. Second by Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, Mr. Mejia, can you uh, read the instructions into the record and call the roll? Uh, yes, to deny the appeal of CEQA appeals filed by Park Labrette Impacted Residence Group, and two, Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, and thereby sustain the Central Area Planning Commission's certification of the environmental clearance for third and Fairfax mixed-use project environmental e impact report, CEQA findings, and mitigation monitoring program for the construction of a new mixed-use development which includes 331 multifamily dwelling units and 83,984 square feet of commercial space for the property located at 300 through 370 South Fairfax Avenue, 6300 through 6370 West 3rd Street, and 347 South Oakden Drive, as stated on the record at today's meeting by City Planner William Lambert and by the Planning Deputy for Council District 5, Mr. Dylan Sated. I will call the roll. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. Yes. Yes. Council Member Cedillo. Yes. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Council Member Lee is absent, and Councilwoman Rodriguez is absent. That's three members, and it carries, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Thank you so much. Uh, in as much as our good friends at Council District 5, 
uh, asked us to continue item number 15. Uh, can you confirm, Mr. Mejia, that this concludes our business for today? It does, sir. It concludes Excellent. our Excellent. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you, members. Thank you, staff. Uh, thank you, appellants, applicants, and members of the public.